the meeting of the Dudley Charlton Regional School Committee is now in session. It is Tuesday, June 11th, 2019. We're at the Shepherd Hill Regional High School in Dudley, Massachusetts, and it is 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, first order of business, we're going to pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Um, I'm going to move up the um, student spotlight and we'll start right now, okay? And um, Mrs. Pastore. Thank you, and thank you for having our fourth grade students as your student spotlight this evening. So a few years back, we took a look at our fourth grade biography projects, which the students have been doing for a few years, and decided to ramp them up a little bit. I have Mrs. McCarthy with me this morning. She was part of the team that decided that in addition to reading a biography on whichever famous person they choose, past, present, um, they would also come alive as that person through our Heritage School Wax Museum. So I brought a small sampling of the cast of characters we had with us this year, and they're going to share their projects. They did them last week in the school auditorium, which was a little warmer than this, and the every year never fails. We lose one or two to fainting. I think, it, truly, I was talking to the school nurse, and it has something about holding their body still, because they're wax figures, and they can't come to life until someone presses their button. Um, so, but we have a few of them with you tonight. I'll introduce them and as their character, and they're going to tell you a little bit about the historic person that they've chosen. Our first is Emma Romer, and she is Marie Curie. Hi, I'm Marie Curie. I was born in Warsaw, Poland, 1867. My life as a child was very different from other girls in the 1800s. I was always eager to learn. By the time I was four, I loved to stay at my father's science equipment. People always said I was a wonderful, bright, and curious child. I had three sisters and one brother. That was a lot for my mom to take care of. I faced a lot of challenges in my life. For example, my family had been very, very poor when I was young. My mother had also gotten a disease that was called tuberculosis and had to go away for more than a year to try and get better. Soon after, my sister got a disease that was called typhus and passed away. Soon after, my mother passed away. This left me very sad. I then married Puri, but soon after, lost him to an accident with a heavy wagon. This left me very depressed, and the only reason I kept, kept living was for my children. Some facts you might find interesting about me is that sometimes, due to hunger, I fainted. I also met my husband, Puri, because I was looking for a bigger lab space. I also discovered radium and polonium. Some of my important contributions are my discoveries of radium and polonium. Today, polonium is used as an atomic heat source, but it doesn't last very long. And then today, radium is used as um, treatments of some types of cancer, but not all of them. I died on July 4th, 1934. In May, I started feeling weak. The radium exposure was winning out. All of my personal things, such as my books, notebooks, and other personal things, are too dangerous to touch, even after about 100 years. To learn more about my life, you can visit your local library. up here so we can uh... up 
Karina Polyanis as Hillary Rodham Clinton. Oh, Hello there, my name is Hillary Diane Rodham Clinton. I was born in Chicago, Illinois on October 26, 1947. I am a Scorpio. In my early years, my life was fine with just a few obstacles. When I was three years old, I moved to the Chicago suburb of Park Ridge. There are almost 50 kids in the neighborhood. I have two brothers. I was often called a tomboy. One day, I was excluded from a game in my neighborhood. Once I told my mom, she told me to stand up for myself. I did what I was told and was never left out again. My dad always pushed me to do my best. Unlike other fathers at this time, I was treated just like my brothers. At age nine, I was called stuck up. No one knew that I needed glasses, but I did not wear them, so I could not see where someone was. When I was 13, I had the dream to be an astronaut. I wrote a letter to NASA asking what it took to be one. Quote, we're not interested in women astronauts, they wrote back. I am famous because I fight for women's rights. I was first lady to Bill Clinton. I started the Clinton Foundation. I served as Secretary of State from 2009 to 2013. When my husband Bill became president, I was married to Bill and became first lady. With Bill, we started the Clinton Foundation. President Barack Obama asked me to be Secretary of State. As I traveled around the world and fought for women's rights, I caused our world to have more female leaders. I wrote the books, It Takes a Village and Hard Choices. Some of my most important contributions are things like how I'm the only former first lady to run for president and be secretary of state. I started the Clinton Foundation. I was part of the 9-11 cleanup and made sure government paid billions of dollars to treat the health problems of those helping. I was the first woman democratic candidate of presidency. I faced many challenges. For example, I was made fun of for not taking my husband's last name. I was called the Hillary problem for a time. I lost the primary races against Barack Obama. After settling in Washington, D.C., I had to move abruptly to Arkansas. I was part of the Nixon investigation. I was a law teacher. As a young girl, I dreamed of becoming an astronaut. When the Secret Service agents gave us code names, I was evergreen. I'm still alive. I'm still working in politics. I have a granddaughter. In 2016, I ran for president and lost against Donald Trump. I'm still working in the Clinton Foundation. We have Ed Sheeran, also oh, known Sheeran. as Cold and Blackwell. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ed Sheeran. I was born in Hebden Bridge, Britain in 1991. As a child, my life was musical. My favorite artists were Eminem, Jay-Z, and Damien Rice. When I was 16, I went to see Damien Rice in Dublin. He was one of my biggest inspirations to become a songwriter. I am famous because I am a singer, songwriter, and guitar player. I have done tours all around the world. Almost all my songs and albums top 30 in the UK charts. Some of my important contributions are that I made music. People are singing my music all around the world. I know that they will remember me for it. One more contribution is I have created a new type of music. It is a folk slash love slash rap slash urban music. I, I faced many challenges. For example, I was bullied for having red hair and freckles as well as a stuttering glasses. I have also been homeless. I was homeless for a year. I had to call my friends and ask if I could crash at their house during the night. A couple of things you might find interesting are that I perform with Elton John and name my guitars, my little room I started by rapping. I am still alive today. I am 28 years old. I am a singer, songwriter, and guitarist. I will now play one of my songs. Thank <laughs> you. 
As you're listening to their speeches, they had to learn the history of their famous person as well as some of the challenges they, sh they faced as well as the contributions they made. Um, I like to say when we do the Wax Museum, it's like we're putting on a play and everyone gets to be the star because they all do such a great job. And this is Preston Enberg at Babe Ruth. <laughs> I was born in Baltimore, Maryland, 1895. I got my nickname Babe while I was with the Orioles. They called me the coach and me Babe because I was seeing so many things for the first time, like riding a train, elevators, riding a bike, and eating in restaurants. I'll talk more about the Orioles next. As a child, my life was very poor. I was then the oldest of eight kids, and I didn't like school very much, and when I was six, I stopped going and hung out on the streets. When I was seven, my dad brought me to St. Mary's Punch Bowl. I am fans and sell a lot of MLB records in my career. After six months with the Orioles, I signed with the Boston Red Sox. I played with the Red Sox from 1914 until 1920. In 1920, I signed with the New York Yankees. I was the first ever player to hit 60 home runs in one season. The last home runs of my career were on May 25th, uh, 1935. In 1935, I was traded to the Boston Braves. Some of my important contributions are to St. Mary's. I faced a lot of challenges. For example, my family was very poor and couldn't afford health care. My parents never came to visit me at St. Mary's. A couple of things I might find interesting are, I bought a farm in Sudbury, Mass. called Home Plate. I had horses, cows, p pigs, and a dog named Dixie. I died on August 16, 1948. I was 53 when I died. I was sick with cancer. To read more about me, visit your local library. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1933. <coughs> Being a young girl during my time was rough. World War II was going on, but I felt safe in my home. Marilyn, my older sister, passed away when I was little. She was the one who nicknamed me Kiki, the shy little girl. I excelled through school, having great grades, just like my mother, Celia. <coughs> I went on to go to Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. Celia wanted me to become a teacher, but I found more interest in constitutional law so I became a lawyer. My husband, Martin Ginsburg, got into Harvard with me, but because I had a husband with a wealthy family, Harvard took away my scholarship. I was in the minority. I fought for it back and won. In 1955, I became a mother to Jane. Ten years later, my second child, James, was born. Marty was diagnosed with cancer, and to make sure he could stay at Harvard, I took his classes and did his work. I felt that everyone should be treated equally, no matter the color of their skin or gender. Because you know what? We're all just people. That's what I was fighting about, gender equality. I took a case about a man named Charles Mortis. His mother was sick, but because he was a male who never married, Charles couldn't take care of his mother. The case came all the way to Colorado, where I fought as hard as I could so we could take care of his mother, and I won the case. Going forward now, I'm a Supreme Court Justice. In 1993, President Clinton nominated me as a Justice. The Senate vote was unanimous, only one voted against my confirmation. On August 10, 1993, I took my seat on the Supreme Court. One law that I passed is same-sex couples can marry in all 50 states. Did you know that the lacy collars around my neck are actually called Javits? When you're on the bench, you have to stay fit. So I do the Royal Canadian Air Force workouts, but on the weekends, I like to go golfing or horseback riding. Something you might not know about me is that I had to give up water skiing in my late 70s. I've had cancer twice plus a heart procedure, but I stayed strong and got through it. I'm 85 and the oldest member on the Supreme Court currently. Right now I have no intention to leave the Supreme Court. I'll continue to fight for what's equal and fair, whether rulings are my liking or not, I'll still make sure my voice is heard so future generations can make the right decisions. Hello, 
my name is Wayne Gretzky, and I was born in Brantford, Ontario, Canada, January 26, in the year 1961. As a child, my life was good. I had three brothers named Keith, Glenn, and Brent, and one sister named Kim. I used to spend hours ice skating. I was just two when I f first learned how to ice skate. When I first joined Pee Wee Hockey, I played with boys way older than me. In my last year of Pee Wee Hockey, I scored 378 goals. I was so into hockey, my dad built me a homemade ice skating rink. <coughs> I faced many challenges. For example, first was the fact that I was famous as a child, and because of my skills, parents didn't like it either. Another challenge was that when I was 16, I moved to Salt Site Marie to pursue my hockey dream. I am famous because I am the first person to score 200 points in one NHL season. I hold 62 NHL records, including most goals, assists, and points. I was also one of the most sportsmanlike player award. Some facts that you might find interesting are that I won the most heart trophies than any other athlete with a record of nine. <clears throat> if you count up all my assists, I'd have more assists than anyone did points. In total in my career, I got around 900 goals, around 2,000 assists, and around 3,000 points. Another interesting fact is many people know me for playing with the Edmonton Oilers and LA Kings, but I also played for the St. Louis Blues and the New York Rangers. I contributed to hockey in many ways. I contributed by being a calm guy and not getting into fights. I also coached the team to Olympic, the Team Canada to the Olympic gold in the 2002 Olympics. Now that I'm retired from hockey, I have a bit more freedom. I coached the Phoenix, Phoenix Coyotes in the year 2009 and now I own the Toronto restaurant called Wayne Gretzky's. Now going way further back in history, I have Kaya Murphy as Sacagawea. Hello, my name is Sacagawea. I was born in Idaho in 1790. As a child, my life was very challenging. I had to fish and hunt for my food, and my tribe lived and camped near the Rocky Mountains. I had an older brother and a younger brother and sister. There were no schools where I lived, so I had to learn it all by myself. I learned how to collect wood, make clothing, provide medicine, and make medicine out of plants. I am famous because I am honored as a Native American who changed American history by helping the United States settle a huge region. I am also on the US dollar coin, just like it right there, and I have some real ones right here. A statue stands in North Dakota of me, and, and as well, like I just said, I'm on the US dollar coin. Some contributions about my journey are that I went on the Lewis and Clark expedition, and we changed American history by helping the United States settle a huge region. This area included the states of Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Some obstacles that I had was that I traveled 28 months with a baby on my back, and I was a prisoner for the Minichi Indians, and I, I consider myself a slave for Lewis and Clark because they did not, not know how to do anything. <laughs> Some interesting facts about me are that I had to eat dried up rattlesnake tail to give birth early just to go on the expedition. I had my first child when I was 16 years old, and shortly after, I had three other, two other children. I, had to, I was forced to get married by the age of 13, and I did not like that. I died on December 20th, 1812, because of an illness called putrid fever. It is caused by when bacteria is spread by flea. My illness cannot be cured without any antibiotics. To learn more about my life, you can visit your local library. Visiting astronaut Lillian Terry as Sally Ride. Hold your helmet. Hello, my name is Sally Ride. I was born in Encino, California in 1951. As a child, my life was exciting and busy. Growing up in Encino, California was exciting because I had a little sister named Karen. I loved science, math, and playing tennis. I was also a really good student. When I was only nine years old, my family took a whole year traveling to Europe. I am famous because I was the first U.S. to in space. 
Even though I was not the first woman in space, I still made history for being the first U.S. woman in space. The first woman in space from, was from the Soviet Union. Her name is Valentina Tereshkova. I, some of my important contributions are providing hope, encouragement, and a possibility that other females could become an astronaut. I have faced a lot of challenges in life. For example, I battled cancer for more than a year. Another challenge is I had to give up being an astrophysic to become an astronaut. A couple of things you might find interesting are that I researched and wrote the Ride Report. <coughs> the Ride Report stated that NASA should send satellites into space to keep watch over the spacecrafts. I died on July 23, 2012 because of cancer. I died at the age of 61 at my home in San Diego. Trade more about my life, you can visit your local library. Who is still I read by Megan Stein. Illustrated by Ted Anson. So you know who this is. There you go. Thank you, Dr. Nash. Yeah, that's me. Eight. Five, 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 and as Lucille Ball, Elise Peculis. Hello, my name is Lucille Ball. I was born in Jamestown, New York in 1911. As a child, my life was complicated. My father, Henry Ball, worked for Bell Telephone putting up phone lines all around the country, so we moved a lot. When I was only three years old, my father died of typhoid fever, so me and my mother moved in with my grandparents, Frederick and Flora Bell Hunt. They lived in Stellar, New York, not far from Jamestown. Then my brother, Fred Ball, was born in 1915. When my grandmother died, I looked after my younger cousins. Even though I was still young, I was very responsible. <coughs> When I was 10, I took some very weird jobs. I sold hot dogs at a boardwalk and an ice cream shop until I was fired for not putting the banana on the banana split. One of my dreams was to be an outstage, like the, like the performers in vaudeville acts or in Flickr's movies. I am famous beca because I was one of the best female comedians of all time. I was also a hit in my own TV show, I Love Lucy, and a model and dancer who moved to Hollywood to become a movie star. Some of my important contributions are family-wise, my children, Lucy Arnaz and Desi Arnaz Jr. Career-wise, I had three TV shows, I Love Lucy, Here's Lucy, and The Lucy Show. I faced a lot of challenges. For example, when I was, when I was a teenager, I wanted to perform on stage. I went to an acting lesson, but they said I had no talent and to go home. I also got fired a couple of times. I lost my job during the Great Depression in 1929 through 1939. A couple of things you might find interesting about me are I had three heart attacks before I died. I also had three hit TV shows, which were Here's Lucy, I Love Lucy, and The Lucy Show. I died on April 26, 1989. I died from a heart attack, my third heart attack in my lifetime. To read more about my life, you can visit your local library. Who was Lucy Obama by Pam Pollock and Meg Bilvesso? Christopher Columbus. I was born in Genoa, Italy in 1451. As a child, my life was good. I mostly like watching boats come to the docks and unload all different sorts of goods, like silk and tea. I also like watching them leave with copper, wool, tin, and weapons. My father was a wool weaver and my mother was the daughter of a wool weaver, and she helped in the family business. When they retire, I am expected to help in the family business. Yet, I don't want to. I want to work on a ship that sails. So age 14, I got a job as a cabin boy to help on a ship at sales. Fame. I am famous because I discovered America and some of the Caribbean islands, now known as Hibanoia. I discovered the Bahamas as well. I also explored the coast of South America and Central America. Contributions. <coughs> some of my important contributions are traveling across the Atlantic Ocean to Spain four times, in 1492, 1493, and 1502. I was determined to find the direct water route from Europe to Asia, but I never did. Instead, I found the Americas, known as North America and South America. 
obstacles. I face a lot of challenges. For example, nine of my ships sank in the Atlantic Ocean due to harsh weather. Also, people on my ship had many diseases, and we all had lack of food and water, so everyone was dehydrated and starving. Uh, interesting facts. A couple of things you might find interesting about me are that I brought horses to the New World on my second voyage. Also, you can remember the date I found America by this rhyme. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I died on May 20th, 14, 1506, due to congestive heart failure. Back then, the doctors called the, the disease gout, but today the doctors call it Reacher syndrome. To, to read more, no, to find more about my, my life, you can, read more about, you can read more about my life at your local library. History with once again Sally Ride. This time it is Casey Cluett as Sally Ride. Hello, my name is Sally Ride. I was born in Encino, California in 1951. As a child, my life was pretty normal. I grew up in a house that had many books. I read everything. When I was about two years old, my parents had another baby. Her name was Karen, but when I was little, I couldn't pronounce Karen. So I called her Bear. The name really stuck that her friends started to call her Bear. In 1960, my family and I traveled to Europe on a vacation for a year. I am famous because I was the first American woman in the States, but I never liked labels. I wanted my work to speak for itself. I wanted young women to reach for the stars. <laughs> I became famous because I was determined. Some of my important contributions are on the Challenger. I used the robotic arm to send satellites into space and I was also a really big role model for little girls. I faced a lot of challenges. For example, I had to sit at a desk for five years just to become an astronaut. And when I was an astronaut, I had to wait for it to be my turn to go up into space. In space, it was tricky being weightless. I had to learn how to move around the cabin by pushing off one wall into the other wall. Some things you might find interesting are that I had a choice if I wanted to be either a tennis champion or an astronaut. I was also gay. I divorced Steve Holly to go live with Tim O'Shaughnessy, a girl my age that I met while playing tennis. I died on July 23rd, 2012. I died from cancer that was in my body and I also passed away in a wonderful place called San Diego, California. You can visit your local library and read more about my life. letting us share these wonderful presentations with you. We had so many outstanding presentations and it amazes me that each of these students takes the turn, takes the time and under the tutelage of their fabulous teachers learns, learn all about their famous hero and is able to get up there in front of everyone that comes through and share their knowledge. So thank you and a big round of applause for these kids. We're gonna <laughs> Approval of the minutes. Um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our regular meeting of Wednesday, May 22nd. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? I just found one date on the Charlton, on page 7. The Charlton Town meeting is June 12th, isn't that correct? Yes, that is yes. correct. Yes. So just on the second, under 10, number 10, next group winning dates, the second paragraph should be June 10th. I mean June 12th. Get it, Sandy, under. 10, just so it's for the record. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And, okay. And Kathy? Uh, oh, yeah, I wait. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, one abstention, okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of our executive session of Wednesday, May 22nd. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Saying none, all in favor? Motion carries and one abstention. Uh, okay, first order of business is reorganization of the Dudley Charlton Regional School Committee. And Dr. Nash will yes. take over. I will. Thank you. Uh, as you know, uh, 
after the second uh, town meeting the school committee needs to reorganize so we'll start this evening by taking nominations uh, for uh, chair of the school committee I, nominate Pauline Do I have a second? second any discussion all those in favor unanimous I turn the meeting over to you <laughs> madam chair <laughs> <laughs> um, I will open um, for the vice chair, and I nominate Mary Antoshi. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Congratulations, Mary. Hi, thank you. Same <laughs> to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, that brings us to um, secretary, and uh, the committee usually elects the superintendent to serve in this capacity. Uh, do I have any nominations for the secretary? I'll nominate Dr. Nash until June 30th, which time it becomes Steve Lamarche. Should I make that part of the motion? Yes, that's so good. So we don't have to worry about that. So that's mm -hmm. my nomination. Second. Second. Okay. Well, whoever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Uh, next, it will be the treasurer. Uh, with your vote of May 8th, June Hubbard Ward was appointed to fill the uh, position vacated by Melinda Ernst Funya last month. So um, we usually um, vote for our treasurer, who is uh, June uh, Ward Hubbard. Hubbard Ward. Hubbard Ward. Oh, Hubbard Ward, okay. And uh, Kathy and I did meet her. Yeah, we met the other day. She, she said, "Spoke Italian." She was good. We mentioned <laughs> we mentioned your name. Love fest. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll make the nomination then. <laughs> okay. I, I have a second discussion. Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Assistant treasurer. Again, the committee elects the interim superintendent, and then we we can. Uh, put in that part of the motion, Steve Lamash, when he gets here. Make so do I have same motion? I so moved. Okay. Second. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Okay. Borrow, borrowing skip, authorization. Did I skip anything? Yes. The representative of the for the South County South County Education Foundation. Oh, I I have it a little. Further down oh, here. Oh, oh, okay, uh, because I, I we have this from uh, Sandy, so oh, okay. I wasn't okay. going okay. by that. Fine. Okay, matter. it doesn't matter which, oh. which one we take. Uh, borrowing authorization: a vote is necessary to address any short-term borrowing needs. I ask the school committee to vote to authorize the district treasurer to borrow from time to time in anticipation. Of revenue of the financial year beginning July 1st, 2019, and ending June 30th, 2020, in accordance with the provisions of the Massachusetts general laws, and to issue a note or notes, therefore, payable within one year, and to renew any notes or notes as may be given for a period of less than a year. So we're giving the borrowing authorization uh, to our treasurer. Okay, so so moved. All right, second. Do I have a second. All right. Uh, any discussion on it? Seeing none. All in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Okay. Now the representative to the Southern Worcester County Educational Collaborative. I ask that um, you elect the interim super superintendent, and then uh, Mr. Lamash when he is here in July first to serve in this capacity, but if anyone else would like to serve in that capacity, you can nominate anyone for this position. It can be the superintendent, some years it can be a school committee person. Mm -hmm. So, do I have any nomination? I would nominate interim Dr. Nash until July 1st, which time would be Stephen Lamash. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. And I believe, did I um, get through those before we do the subcommittees? Anything else? CPAC. 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 Okay. 
Yeah. yeah. The last one on the subcommittees. All right. And uh, we will uh, take nominations for the CPAC. It can be any of the school committee. Anyone wish to serve as a school committee member on the CPAC? That's a special ed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember you brought that right. up to yeah, us too. Yeah, school committee member, right? Yeah. yeah. Would you like? Yeah, sure. Okay. I nominate Kathleen Caminati to serve on the CPAC representative. Good. Second. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Okay. Congratulations, Kathy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> now that'll take us to uh, the subcommittees. And in view of the policy BDE, the committee may want to consider making appointments to subcommittees this evening. And so we'll take the budget and finance subcommittee and who would be interested in serving on it. I think I will be. I'd like to. Um, Kathy, you still want it? Sure. How about anyone else? Just nobody. Do you want to do it again, I'll Stephanie? Okay, so I would step back and see, but okay. Come on now. <laughs> so we have three. Uh, the policy review subcommittee, and um, and we have Mary. Are you still interested? <laughs> the committee of one. <laughs> the committee of one right now. Sure. We can have two and three on that. Who would be interested? I'll Kenny. Mary. Okay. Can Who you, else? Can Anybody you else? During the day. Yes, we'll figure it out. But I okay. can't tomorrow. I know there's one tomorrow. Okay. I can't. Okay, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Anyone else before? No okay. No one wants this committee. What? <laughs> huh? No one wants <laughs> Come on, it's I so much it. fun. I do it you want, but you can do it. Do Kathy, do you want to? That's fine, no, because I'm going to do others. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a committee, <laughs> we have a committee of two. Social All right. Media. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is my social um, media. <laughs> the executive session minutes review <laughs> subcommittee, I've been on it in the past and yep. so is Kathy. Yep. Anyone interested? That just means we read all, all just for those who want to know, executive yeah. session minutes from the previous several years, we read through them and release the ones that can't be released. Some can never be released because it might have people's names, but most of them can be released. So it's it's like two meetings probably. Two meetings and then it's over. <laughs> and then it's over until <laughs> the next punch comes along. So, so there's not much to it, but yeah. it has to be done. I'll do it and yeah, Kathy I'd like to do that. I'll do it anyone else. No. <laughs> okay. You don't need another person. No, no, no. that one's really fast. Yeah. That, this is fast, we'll be over. Yeah. Uh, two meetings probably. Uh, safety, okay, Jamie, mm -hmm. and who else? I joined safety with. Oh, good. <laughs> so Kenny, anyone else? I was on it before as a Dudley person, but I don't know if you really need that. It was just Mrs. Terry and I, but, but mm -hmm. if you want a third person, is it good it's to have a Dudley person? It's up to you if you want to, or is two enough, Jamie? Two enough, what do you think? Enough. I know it works with anyone as you and I, but I think that you have a perspective from a Dudley School okay, District. Okay, then put me on that. Yeah, that. Okay. Sure. Dudley School. So, sure. You don't mind, do you, Mrs. Cabala? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to come to every meeting. <laughs> but I always do. And then the last one is um, signing the warrant, the warrant oh, committee, you know, oh. on the off mm -hmm. meetings. Mm -hmm. And I, seeing I'm close by, I'll do it. Me I know too. Kathy will. I'm, I'm close by. Okay, Kathy. Okay, okay. good, Kathy. Did you want no, 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 no. Go right ahead. Okay. Yeah. And anyone, um, Mary was our um, alternate signing. Um, so do you still want that? Mary? Uh, I can do that. Okay, good. I, you can put me as an alternate. Too. Okay, I will. I Go ahead. I have a question. The, chair. the warrant committee, do you need one from every town? Doesn't, no. No, I just wanted just to throw need, that out there for uh, discussion. We need three names. Stephanie, you were on it. I was. Are you interested or? Um, I'm interested in being an alternate. Just sometimes okay. I can't. That'll be good then. So <laughs> that's <laughs> good. <laughs> okay. So then we've got first alternate, <laughs> second, third. <laughs> Take a number like the deli. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, Donna will be happy yeah. to have these alternates. Thank you. Okay, so that concludes I our... Have, Mrs. O'Coin, we haven't yes. really finished with the wages and benefits, I don't think. Have we officially finished? Oh, that's right. So maybe no, we should so reappoint we, ourselves. No. Yeah. We should probably reappoint us. <laughs> yeah, that's my list. Yeah. We're, We're almost, almost finished. We're almost finished. Yeah. Negotiations? No, the, the, not the secretary, the, the wages and benefits mm -hmm. package. Right. So maybe we add okay, do that Kathy again. and I. Yeah, sure. And we're all set. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, this evening now we do have warrants uh, to be signed. And then we have our student rep here. Mm -hmm. And Kaylee, Thank you can you. give us a little report. <laughs> sure. Um, so last weekend on June 2nd, we now have 277 new Shepherd Hill alumni. Mm -hmm. Amazing speeches were given by uh, class president Cam Cushing, Eric Pressman, student council president, and Val Victorian, Emma Whitehead. They were all very inspirational speeches, and they did a great job on those. And as I'm sure you guys are familiar with the DCEF grants, um, they were given to Mr. Skirmon, our gym teacher here, for receiving um, a grant for an additional commercial grade treadmill to help support the updated curriculum that focuses on individual sports and fitness training. And Ms. LeBeau, she received a grant to enable her to purchase an incubator and water bath to expand the microbiology lab at Shepherd Hill. And then this past weekend, June 8th, the More Than Music tribute to Connie Galley was celebrated in the Shepherd Hill Auditorium. This auditorium was dedicated to her. She's a retired faculty member who nurtured the music arts department into what it is today. Performances were given from both past and present students in her honor. In a big congratulations to the girls track team, Rebecca James, Madison Marsh, Christina Gonzalez, and Emma Sullivan, the four by four new state champions. And they also placed, I think it was fourth um, this past weekend at New England. So it was either second. second? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they are amazing. And they've done incredible, incredible things this summer. And will continue to, with only one being a senior. So you have three returning members of that 4x4 four four team. And then also in athletics, Skylar Peach, she received the Midwatch C Player of the Year for her accomplishments in her season in girls lacrosse. And Kylie Wong Lee also received Midwatch A Player of the Year for her accomplishments in softball. They had four, no, three Midwatch A All-Stars on the softball team and a record-breaking six for girls lacrosse, Midwatch C All-Stars. Um, the girls lacrosse team, lost a hard-fought game in their first round of districts, ending their season with a record of 18-2 and two in softball, won their first round of districts 4-2 to two against Holy Name and are playing tonight at 5 p.m. at Worcester State against Grafton. They are predicted um, to win this game tonight. Hopefully they're third seed right now. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> Crazy. But yeah, thank you. That's all I have for today. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Kaylee. Um, <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Kayla? Excellent report. Thank you. That brings us to Citizens Forum this evening. Do we have anybody that would like to come and address us? Okay. Communications, uh, Dr. Nash. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, bring to the committee's attention a very generous donation that we received. You will um, be asked to accept that donation a little bit later in the Director of Finance's report, but uh, we received uh, f from uh, Mr. Amjad Sh Chandre, uh, whose uh, child attends the Charlton Middle School, a check for $10,000 uh, for the teachers and the staff of Charlton Middle School, as he says, who continue to improve student education and strive to create a successful learning environment. So we certainly thank the family, Mr. Chaudre, for this generous donation um, that will be put, I am sure, to good use at Charlton Middle School. So we, want, we wanted to bring that to your attention and you will be asked, as we said, a little bit later on to accept that donation formally through your vote. And that is it. Oh, thank you. Uh, how about our members? I have some hoping Mr. Packard was going to be here because I, it's more kind of a question. Um, I know he's coming. I know there was a fourth He is grade. not this evening. He had a conflict, so okay. yeah, he's not able to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was approached by um, some parents of children that were um, at a softball game down at the middle school, and there were um, some young adults that came screaming through the parking lot on dirt bikes, and so they needed to contact the police and they had no cell reception to do so. And in order to get to just contact the police from down in that lower area, mm -hmm. they had to go halfway down the long driveway. <laughs> and so it was brought to my attention to, I guess, 
question or understand a little better about the cell reception in that area for safety. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. something we could check into. Yeah. Uh, my sense is they probably need repeaters. Do they have them? In well, the, yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd have to yeah. have right. a guess and say clearly right. not. Uh, clearly, yeah. yeah. Mm. Isn't it a problem up there all the time? Yeah, yeah. the school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's kind of poor at heritage too. Yeah. Because it's, it's that whole area. Yeah, that there are certain area. areas. Well, uh, we would need to. I know that in Oxford we had uh, similar uh, issues ar arise, and uh, we had to bring in a company uh, to look at that. And I think it ended up uh, uh, having repeater towers, what they call, put in uh, to increase the reception. Sometimes it's the, just simply the materials that are used in the building, so you can't get it inside the building. You have to go step outside, but uh, it may be that whole area. But we would probably need to look into that, find out, and then look at what the cost might be. Maybe okay, the so safety committee subcommittee yeah. sure. could take a look at it. Mm -hmm. right. but That's a good point. It, yeah. it seemed like a valid yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. No question about it. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you for bringing thank that you. out. Yeah. Anyone else? I just want, go ahead, no, 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 I just go want to go say ahead. that the graduation was beautiful. Mm -hmm. The kids did a great job with their mm -hmm. speeches. Right. Um, I, I think that the whole the whole ceremony went really well, and um, I want to thank Dr. Nash for acknowledging the school committee. Um, that isn't often done, and we work and, really yeah. hard. <laughs> thank you, um, Dr. Nash. So I I personally appreciated yeah. that. Um, the other thing is we might want to look at the logistics of how the setup is for the graduation because there's tables in front of where people are trying to see the kids. Um, from my vantage point and some of the parents, they couldn't see the kids, um, just some of them. And um, also when the diplomas are being given out, everyone's back is to the audience. Right, and it has ne it was never that way until we got to the DCO, and I, I, the yeah. setup is poorly because we always face the audience mm -hmm. and the kids face, and when I did hand out the diploma, we'd both be facing and they'd mm -hmm. get a nice picture. Now, uh, all our backs are mm -hmm. towards the... Uh, and maybe we could front. push back or something. Yeah, something. They, they have to put uh, places mm -hmm. differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, I noticed that, that yeah. uh, it's so different than when we used mm -hmm. to do it. Right, Kathy? You yeah, know that. Well, when we had in the gym, the kids were on the floor and they would come up. You know, yeah. They also face the same way the yeah. audience. But we were now always facing around. all of us. Yeah. But I'm all, my back's, you know, they give us an X mm -hmm. way to stand and your, your back is, mm -hmm. you know, to the audience. Yeah. And so are the kids. Oh, that could probably be taken away. Yeah, again. so we can. Oh, sure, Thank I'm sure you. that's something. Yeah, we can definitely. So I'm on the class officers for oh, the class of 2020. <laughs> um, so <Perfect. laughs> yeah, the class Perfect. officers, we usually um, set up, we're responsible for graduation, senior banquets and everything. So that's definitely something yeah. that we can take care yeah. of for next year. Otherwise, everything is very impressive. Mm -hmm. It goes very, very smoothly. Very and I never did bring it up, and I'm glad you did, because you know I was aware of that too, mm -hmm. that it seemed that yeah it was students, definitely when i was marshalling the, yeah, um students the kids don't get a they, chance yeah they didn't to, know where to go like yeah, behind get front, it was pitches. very tight up there yeah. but yeah we can definitely but everything else just went very yeah. uh, the senior class did a great job on that they absolutely good. anyone else for communications kenny i wanted to bring up um mrs o'coin and mrs cabal and i were able to attend connie val uh, galley's uh, dedication and it was outstanding um, the whole thing I didn't expect it to be three hours long but it was out it was worth, it worth every was. minute it was outstanding and it was and we couldn't really leave. good I expected I said oh I'll just stay for about an hour because it was three hours but it was so good I have we, the program if the committee wants to look at what was done it's yeah. here I can pass it around um, but again, it was great to see that dedication, well-deserved dedication for right. Mrs. Galley, and I was glad to attend there on, on behalf of the committee. I just um, want to add. Yeah, that, please, please. Um, you know, you, if you out go to these music programs, everything so, runs so smoothly, you think, boy, you don't realize hours and hours that go on because it's flawless. Any program that I've ever put on that music department is yes. flawless, and you don't realize 
I mean, I was well, right behind them, them. So we do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I mean, like, even getting, what they did is they had alumni from back as far as 1986 would give a little speech about how she helped them, and then they'd have someone sing. We had Katie Tokaz, who's a Broadway performer, has come back. It was wonderful. For those who weren't there, if you go out the hall tonight, just go down the hall and you'll see the piano. Remember how they were going to make the piano into it? You should it's take beautiful. a look at it on the wall it's, out there. Yeah. It's on the outside wall and going down the car. It's beautiful. They outdid themselves. Oh, I didn't. Ex I couldn't. I expected it to be nice, yeah. but it was ten times more than what I expected. Yeah. So it was outstanding and um, good. Good for Mrs. Galley and yeah. what a great honor. Yeah, so. Um, and there were a lot of alumni that yeah. Yeah. Um, attended that came back from previous years. This should be for three and a half hours. <laughs> 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 but it was very nice. It was it very was. nice. I have a couple of quick okay. other things I just wanted to say. Um, I was able to attend STEAM night at Charlton Elementary School. Um, both of my kids were able to go and it was outstanding. Um, my hat's off to Mrs. Pacheco and her entire team. Um, excellent work. I have the flyers here. Feel free to pass them around if people want to look at them, but it was, it was a great night. Secondly, I had the opportunity to attend the Dudley Elementary School Memorial Day concert. Mrs. Seibold invited me to come over and tour the building and um, was able to be there at the same time as for the um, Memorial Day concert, and that was excellent as well. I look forward to seeing Heritage, um, their performance next year. Well, I did attend that. And that it was amazing. That was amazing. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. yeah. same, Both same in Dudley. Same so, in Dudley. Yeah. And I did it. I was caught Diane's to at the they were at the very end of yeah. that one. It they was, were amazing. Yeah, it was great. So um, that's all I had. Thank and you. And thank you, um, Kenny, for all the pictures that you take. I really oh, enjoy I seeing them. I can send them to the committee too. Yeah. Um, but I just sent them, took them, so I could show my wife and things. Yeah. Connie's thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And even of the kids, you sent me a lot of pictures of the different schools oh, that the, you visited. Oh, the blogs. Yeah. The blogs. <laughs> so, anyone else? Okay. That brings us to a superintendent's report. Yes. Um, this evening, I've provided for you some information uh, that was recently sent to us and also um, to be shared with school committee members on uh, school choice. It comes from Commissioner Riley. Uh, as a result of an advisory, I was thinking back, 1995 was the initial yes, advisory and that. nothing <laughs> since then. Uh, but uh, along those lines over the years, you can imagine with all of the commissioners, the number of questions that superintendents, school committee members, all of us asked regarding school choice. And so they've taken all of those questions and really put it into a pretty comprehensive document. Uh, and it answers many of the individual questions or multiple questions that school districts have asked over the years. And since this district uh, participates in school choice, I thought it would be an interesting, you know, uh, Q&A uh, for you to look at. Uh, we certainly, I've read it and uh, there are some things when Sandy and I were talking about, you know, our process and all of that. Just as reminders to us, I think sometimes we forget there's so much involved in this, uh, yeah, but I thought uh, it would be interesting for you to uh, look at that in your leisure time. There's a lot of questions that were answered on school choice. Along those lines, I can give you an update on school choice as to where we are. Uh, you know that the committee uh, voted uh, for 60 slots, uh, and those slots were in grades 7, 8, and 9. In grade 9, there were 30 slots for next year. We have 23 of those filled, so I'm confident that uh, between now and probably August 26th, <laughs> people start thinking about this, parents about this. Uh, at uh, the middle school levels, uh, we had identified 15 at each of the schools. Uh, in grade 8, uh, we have four at CMS. Uh, thus, to date, we have none uh, at uh, grade 8 at DMS. And in grade seven at both schools, we have five at both schools. A little bit slower, but not to be um, unanticipated. Uh, I think that, I think people uh, sometimes uh, are not thinking in terms that maybe high school really does begin at the upper grades in middle school because the courses that you take certainly start to open those pathways at high school. So I, I think, uh, and also, I think oftentimes people think that traditionally slots are only at high schools. 
it just seems to be where we tend, to, you know, in the state to find them more often than we do uh, at elementary or middle school. So it's a little bit different uh, than what you've had in the past. So uh, there may be a point in uh, July where Superintendent Lamash may come back to you and uh, make a, a uh, recommendation that you look uh, to uh, open up another grade, uh, either at the high school, elementary, or middle school. So. Go ahead. I've um, received contact from a family that's looking for a sixth grader to um, apply for mm -hmm. school choice in our district. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that there's a possibility of others if we expand, mm -hmm. if we were interested at some point to mm -hmm. expand those grades. Sure. Yep. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. Does uh, that conclude? You? That is for our special topics. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that brings us to new business. Report of the uh, Director of Finance and Operations, uh, Mr. Matthew. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Dudley Middle School received a donation of $500 from the University of Michigan for their participation in the Monitoring the Future study. Mm. Uh, Charlton Elementary School received a check of, uh, for $99.75 from Planet Aid. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, um, as Dr. Nash had indicated, certainly not least, Mm -hmm. uh, among these donations is the uh, CMS donation of ten thousand dollars. Recommend approval of these donations. Make a motion we approve all the donations. Do I have a second. second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> to the chair. I'm sorry. Um, not, not that every donation is very important, but I assume we're sending something special to the family that the Mr. Um, the, the donation for child middle school I just ask that maybe something some recognition there mm -hmm. be made mm -hmm. just my opinion yeah. and I think we letter. usually send a letter Anyways, to all of them yeah. thanking okay. them right great mm -hmm. because every amount every mm -hmm. amount counts, yeah. counts. thank you yeah. so we'll do that um, in preparing for next year uh, mr. Greenberg has started to take a look at the cafeteria um, uh, positions and uh, with it looking likely that Mason Road School would be part of the um, community <coughs> eligibility uh, provision program, meaning uh, there's no cost for um, to students for for getting food at the school. Um, he's looked at the uh, expected workload increase um, based on hopefully increased participation, as there's no cost. Hopefully, people will. Everybody will be taking a lunch, um, as well as a breakfast, mm -hmm. and, bre and the breakfast program is required. Um, so he's recommending that a, uh, we create a new position uh, of, a fi of five hours at Mason Road Cafeteria, plus an increase of three hours to an existing three-hour position, making for a six-hour position. Uh, uh, I recommend the school committee uh, approve these request changes for next year. I'll entertain a motion to approve um, the request that Mr. Matthew set forth. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Good. Okay. Discussion, Jamie. Uh, I would assume that the funds would come out of the um, revolving, the revolving mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we discussed it at the Wages and Benefit Committee meeting last week. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to make sure. Yep. Right. No. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> 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 right. Any other Not in the budget, Mrs. Yeah. Terry. <laughs> it's in the <laughs> revolving. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. Thank you very much. <laughs> and just an update on the DMS cooling tower. Mm. Um, we w are able to use the state bid, uh, state contract for this. Um, the, the rules had changed a couple of years ago, and um, it took a little bit of, of uh, figuring out the color, the which side to switch on the Rubik's Cube. Um, but uh, this should cut down the timeline. Uh, by a couple of weeks, and it's our hope and expectation that the uh, AC uh, system is working uh, for the start of the new school year. Uh, I do still anticipate about $70,000 for this project. Uh, we'll put it up uh, on the uh, state site tomorrow and uh, should have quotes uh, and uh, a final project cost by the end of the week. And that is all I have for the committee this evening. Thank you, Rich. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. Through the chair. Um, Mr. Matthew, if if there if you anticipate that we'll be able to cut a few weeks off the project, wouldn't the price go down a little bit? Well, no, the, this is not project timeline of installation, but, but actual bidding. Material. Act, no actual bidding. 
the bidding okay. timeline will be condensed down. I see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. Um, consideration to approve job descriptions, uh, Dr. Nash. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Uh, I am bringing to you this evening one new job description uh, based on the uh, job that you approved uh, at your last meeting. And the second one is the revised job description of the Director of Pupil Personnel Services. Um, the position was approved the last uh, meeting, but we needed to go back and revise the job description. So I'll point out a, a couple of things that have changed in the job description in my conversations with Superintendent Lamash. Uh, as you'll note in the job description he's provided for the Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning, that person will oversee Title I. So we removed the oversight of Title I from PPS Director, kept the two services for uh, ELL and nurses as part of that also um, defined the supervision and evaluation to ensure that the PPS director is involved in supervising and evaluating uh, SPED staff. So I made that clear. And then went back and under the qualifications uh, included uh, the license preferred, but also the acceptable license that uh, many hold, which is assistant superintendent. Uh, superintendent. Uh, so. Uh, I can answer any other questions that you might have about the revised job description for the PPS director. Go ahead. I have a question. In the PPS job description on page three, um, about midway down, it says oversees McKinney Vento as it relates yes. to special right. ed. Mm -hmm. But also under the. It includes that also. Yes. Uh, so, what I think what will happen, uh, and we actually talked about this. Uh, I think that uh, until Superintendent Mo Lamash comes on board, what will happen is that Mrs. Allen will oversee uh, McKinney Vento for students with disabilities. The uh, new position, the assistant superintendent, will take on uh, general ed. But what I'm sensing is probably McKinney Vento will move over to the assistant superintendent for teaching and learning. Okay. But I ha just haven't had that conversation with him yet. Mm -hmm. you know, when we were going back and forth, I picked up on it afterward, and I think it needs to move to one and not stay in both. So at this point in time, we've got time uh, to do that. So uh, I will let him know. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. A couple of um, on this second page, of, at the very last bullet on the second page, I think there's something missing that doesn't really make sense. Experience fostering family and community. It's the last page of the yep. second page. What does that? I think there's something that's experience fostering family. What does that mean? Experience fostering family. It it means someone who potentially comes into this position having worked with outside groups, parents, things like that. Uh, you know, typically uh, the person who is involved either in their prior job as a team chair or as an administrator in working with community groups um, to foster, in this case, um, connections. That's kind of, yeah. you have an, do you want me to reward it, maybe? Well, it would, it's, yeah. it's, it's, all the others are, um, well, the what should be experiences. If well, it should start with a verb. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I didn't want to yeah. say, but no, that, that no, word's you're missing. Right. Word, you it should mean? start with a verb. <laughs> no, it should. Because that's, that's why yeah. it kind of, there's Fosters, something it should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yep. And I also, I still have concern because I believe these, and almost the whole back page is special ed oriented. And yeah, we're still saying you're preferring it, it's not required to be special ed mm -hmm. certified. I think since most of the work is special ed, mm -hmm. according to the description, shouldn't it be a requirement? It's preferred. Even the um, experience, you're only saying preferred, it doesn't say required. Well, I think that. That's my question. I think what you're looking for is yep. the breadth of experience, not necessarily in the, in the um, certification. You, you certainly have to have an administrative right. certification, mm -hmm. but in their background, in their work experience. It's in other words, having, ha that's why it's preferred. You don't want to rule out, I mean, this is a job description, you know, not just for the person who holds the position, but in essence, you know. Yeah, for future reference. Right, I'm just exactly. saying, I'd yeah. say 90% of the yeah. work is special. It oriented. is. That's why I'm confused. But um, I would, will tell you that um, oftentimes in many districts, and you saw it, I think, in the list she gave you that some of these uh, positions are assistant superintendent mm -hmm. for pupil services, and thus 
they'll take either license in your current job description that you had prior to this it actually didn't spell out the right. license at all right. it simply says appropriate licensure from Massachusetts I would say that you either have a sped director license and prefer it but I wouldn't want to rule out someone who has a wealth of experience mm -hmm. has done the job and just never had that license because it's not the license that makes the person in that position do well it, it is the background that's so, yeah that's, that's why, why I put preferred but not required even for the experience you don't think it should be required experience because you put preferred I, for that too again I mean you, you know, maybe splitting we're looking still. for um, preference but you try to keep this a little bit broad in that you may rule out someone who may not, for example, have five years, if you say you must have that, but may have three years, but has done all this other. So, we're, mm -hmm. so in that respect, I think keeping it a little bit broader, the superintendent, you know, you're going to interview, interview this person and appoint, so the superintendent will certainly provide you with all of the information and relevant information and background and resume and the skills that they would bring. And uh, I think it, my experience has been to keep it a little bit more open than closed, okay. that's all. All right. Let's say. All right, thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else? Are we just talking about that one job description right now? Yes. Okay. So um, if we have no other discussion, then I'll entertain a motion to approve um, this uh, a job description for the Director of Pupil Personnel Services. I might add, I'm going to remove McKinney Vento. I don't think, I, I think at this point, yeah. so. <laughs> so I don't think that um, Superintendent Lamash is going to mind. <laughs> and certainly the PPS Kathy. director won't Can mind. Go ahead. You fine. The recommended salary range, do we want to include that in the job description? Uh, you no. can, but you don't <laughs> have to. I put that more for your edification for you to see that. Okay, so that will not be in the job description. No, no that would not be. Okay, yeah, going definitely. forward, generally, you don't. You say commensurate with experience, yes, or when you not. put it in. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Okay. 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 Uh, do I have a, a motion uh, to approve this job description? Make a motion. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Do, any more discussion on it? Uh, well, I just have a question for when we go for forth from here. Are we posting this job or not? Does this have to be posted? No, you would, would not have to post it. This is just a job description you're approving. It's, uh, it's a, we can, we'll, we would, let me take, walk that back. Post it internal only. Oh, but it will be posted. Yeah, posted internal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because we are changing yeah. the Right. right. Yes. Change, the change mm -hmm. the job, really. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you back up and tell me why we're posting internal only? because we have an internal person in the position currently. And okay. so, you know, it doesn't mean when you post internal, mm -hmm. you simply don't go out and advertise. It doesn't mean that any, anybody outside couldn't apply, but you also have someone currently, I'm assuming, who has a multi-year contract. So you, you can't hire someone in, if you will, without having two people now in position. So you But isn't it a different position, per se? Yes, but you would, this if someone else has a multiple-year contract for a position, you can't. No, but I'm not right. splitting here, there, but I'd be basically eliminating that position. You are eliminating that so position going forward. Basically. My caution would be, you know, if you went to hire someone That's outside and not the person who's currently in it, you still have to honor a contract for someone who currently has a position called SPED director. That's Even all. if the position's eliminated, you have to honor, honor the contract? You would have to look at the language of the contract to see what she has. I didn't write it. To no. see what it says with respect to reorganization. If you don't have that in there, I think you'd be hard pressed. But I'm not, a, you know, I'm not. No, I'm not a lawyer to be able to tell you that. I'm not saying to change anything. Yeah. I just wanted to understand. The yes. Process. No, but I'm so just the, questioning it myself. Isn't that job being eliminated per se? It is being eliminated in. So is yes. she out of a job? Technically, isn't her job gone? I'm just asking for the legal legality of it all. I don't know how it works. The position is being eliminated as mm -hmm. we know it. Director right. Sped. It's being replaced by this position, and there will be an internal posting right. of this position. Right. Yeah. But if she were to get that position, you would you would have a contract So it would pay her, but not give her the job, basically, that's what would happen? I would, yeah, uh, again, I would have to look yeah, at her, I don't know what yeah, I would have to look at her contract. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. it says either. Because I don't know what the existing contract says mm -hmm. with respect to mm -hmm. a reorg or anything, if it has any language like that. Because Probably wouldn't it be like a teacher if you eliminate 
that position they do have a contract but if their position is gone well if the teacher is, is covered by um, if they have PTS status is covered by language well, be, and well, cut yeah. out the whole so language an individual problem. contract a person on an individual contract is is different in that respect right and um, their contract has a period of time that it runs right. Um, should you know should they be dismissed on grounds on good cause or something that's something different but other than having specific language in your contract that says um, if due to budgetary um, or fiscal constraints and or reorganization which I doubt you have um, the position can be eliminated which means then that the person in that position may not have a position I, but again, I don't know. I don't, don't know. But I was uh, trying to ex uh, explain to Mrs. Terry that internal right. and external. You know, a lot of people think that internal posting means that no one outside can apply. Mm, that's not necessarily what it means, okay. but generally people don't. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're well, on the posting, are we going to put a salary range in there? Is that the salary range? You, you set the to? salary for Is this position, so I would not be putting it in there okay. until we have that discussion. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on it? So we do have a motion on the floor to approve the uh, job description. All in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to the Assistant Superintendent of Learning and Teaching. And um, yes. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure that I'll be able to answer your questions. Uh, this is a job description that Superintendent Lamash uh, sent to me uh, uh, as something that he would like to bring forward, but I certainly can convey any questions that you might have about it. I've done this position, uh, so I, I pretty much know what it involves, uh, and I don't anticipate it's much different than many of the positions uh, that are Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning. I like it teaching and learning, not learning and teaching, but that's just my personal Did anyone preference. Have any questions to I, Dr. Nance? I have some questions in there. Um, we have a standard format for yes. job descriptions. This so has we, to we, be put into that okay. format. So right. that was my first yeah. question. Yeah. And my, my second question is I didn't see under qualifications under Mr. LaMarche's uh, job description anywhere that a master's degree was required. Um, in fact, I don't see much in terms of educational mm -hmm. requirements and I would like to see that personally as in master's mm -hmm. degree additional coursework mm -hmm. beyond master's degree is preferred mm -hmm. and then um, also under the qualifications it says the assistant superintendent for I also like teaching and learning better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mu must hold <laughs> must hold or be eligible for licensure as a superintendent assistant superintendent I would say that for this type of position they must mm -hmm. be licensed as a superintendent or assistant superintendent that's mm -hmm. my opinion I will do the law requires in Massachusetts that you can only employ someone either with a license for the appropriate position they hold or on a waiver. That's the law. Mm -hmm. Do superintendents, and I'm not talking about Superintendent Lamash, always follow that? No. So uh, certainly I don't think that was his intent. I don't, you know, again, I can't put words in, into his mouth for why he wrote it this way or whether that was a, you know, a typo or that. I'm certainly sure he's probably thinking in terms of a candidate who might be close to getting certification and it might, you know, it might be that in a month they have it. So, but he knows certainly as I know that you have to either be on a waiver mm -hmm. or be certified. Mm -hmm. right. we, so we will hire in someone and in a month or two months before they actually sign their contract you know, they have um, their license because they're finishing up a program, getting their license, mm -hmm. and the degree program only awards it like June. Mm -hmm. And so we're waiting to the end of June um, in cases for teachers and that sometimes. So, so in other yeah. words, you could get a waiver for that. Uh, one, the waiver process in Massachusetts is extremely difficult. It used to be easy. Um, it, it goes as follows. One, you must show that you've posted 
and advertise for the position to you must make sure that you have interviewed people who are licensed to qualified three you need to show that the people that you interviewed with very specific reasons were not people that you wanted in the position and you need to give quite a bit of information as you all know you all know that right right and so I'm preaching to the choir and then then that waiver remember is only good for six months it's not a full year anymore and they tell me that this commissioner is a little bit more liberal in giving licenses now I don't know for what categories but we certainly would want you know if you you know posted advertise show that the person that is the best qualified for the position is someone that they would like the commissioner to consider giving a waiver but years ago you didn't have to go through a process you didn't even have to post the position you didn't have to interview you could just apply for a waiver and we got them now it's become a lot more stringent so I certainly can talk to him about that I'm just thinking that we should be consistent we have on the PPS director it's very specific what we're looking for in terms of education and this is a really important position we should be specific as well right and the only license that this position can hold is an assistant superintendent superintendent whereas the PPS director oftentimes as I said to you in many districts is an assistant superintendent for pupil personnel services they actually are in a deputy superintendent in large large districts so that's why the duality of that but this is absolutely the assistant superintendent slash superintendent license it should be in yeah okay so must hold and not cross out or be eligible okay I have a few others if you don't mind in that same area of qualifications it says at least three years experience in a leadership slash administrative role shouldn't that be expanded to say at the building or central office level for this type of position I'm asking are you asking me are you asking your group I'm asking the group the opinion I think you never know who you're gonna get and you could get a really strong leader that has come from you know it depends on the district that they've come from and in the breadth of what they've done but I think that three years experience in a leadership role is a little light like I would love to see like five to ten yeah can I comment on go ahead we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves by making it so strict and restrictive that we don't have candidates and I think that there's going to be a committee or at least there'll be our new superintendent that will be interviewing going through this process so just because they're qualified to submit and then be interviewed doesn't mean that will be they'll be the chosen candidate so I wouldn't be opposed to saying three to five or something but I think if you say ten typically you see something like three to five and then at the very bottom it says in any other alternative to these qualifications it's always the catch-all that if I might just weigh in on the experience in a leadership administrative role I certainly think that the credibility of an assistant superintendent or a director of curriculum is that you've walked in the shoes of a building administrator in some capacity as an assistant or as uh, as a principal uh, given the fact that you know oftentimes uh, you know understanding what they do on a day-to-day -day basis I think is critical and I think having done this position uh, and knowing that uh, ahead of time helped me <laughs> Uh, even though it was for a short period of time but uh, so I, th I think I agree you don't want a pigeonhole and maybe that's what he was trying to do uh, I again when you're weighing everything and you've got you know on this side people who have experience as either a building principal or a central some other central office experience and you have other candidates who maybe are department heads in that there's a different level of experience so I think he's trying to keep it a little bit open-ended and then you know through the process 
it, it re they, really the best usually come to the surface because they can talk about things that someone who's not been in that position doesn't just have that experience. And that's what you saw, I think, when you interviewed candidates for the superintendent. You know, so I would, you know, I think it, it probably doesn't matter whether you spell it out or not, or you say preferred as opposed to must have, that's all. Because this really gets you the resume. The, all this does is get you the first, you know, the paper screening. That's really what this is. You know, it's really, it, it tells people to apply for this because you know you will get, those of you who sat on any committees, you will get a slew of people who you think never read the qualifications mm -hmm. that apply. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is not the be all and the end all. This is the beginning for someone. You must have these things, but you will get those people who will send in for every, every, every a job, so. Just my two cents on that. Anyone else? Uh, well, I, I know she, Mrs. Antossi's not finished, but I maybe a, no, maybe a, no, maybe to, in between Mrs. Terry and Ascent, to three to five years might be a good compromise to, to change it to, to that for that line. Just my thought. I agree with you. Yeah, I mean instead of saying ten, go three to five. That's what I meant. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry good. to interrupt. No, that's sorry. fine. No <laughs> problem. Yeah, please, yeah. She asked. Yeah. Anyone with that? Jump in. Yeah. Okay, so my, my other thing with the, well, there's a couple things. First of all, I, I really kind of liked the MASC job description. Mm -hmm. So I'm struggling a little bit going between the two job descriptions because I thought that the one that MASC came up with was very specific and it really clearly outlined what we would be looking for. And um, so there's pieces of that in the submission from Mr. LaMarche but not <clears throat> wholly, so I'm wondering if somehow we can better meld the two so that it has what Mr. LaMarche is looking for and what, what we worked with MASC on in one job description. Um, and specifically, what I see missing are measurable items that are responsibilities in Mr. LaMarche's job description, whereas in the MASC job description, they are there. And the other is that we're looking, or we talked about, this assistant superintendent for teaching and learning being basically the second in command. So I don't see that anywhere in the job description that Mr. LaMarche has brought forward to us. Um, it doesn't talk about that this person would be the administrator should something happen with the superintendent. And I think that that's very important to, to have in the job description in my opinion. Well, when you, I, I also, you know, we spent $10,000 for these people to come and we really never even refer to it. Right. And I wondered if, I agree with Mrs. Antoshi, maybe we should combine the two. I didn't like this 100% either. Mm -hmm. We never really discussed any of these job descriptions. We kind of just put them aside and never went back to them. So maybe, I don't know, is Mr. Lamash, had, did he get a copy yes. of this? Yes. So mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. I, I think got, he got the entire set and okay. then he got the one that Mass did separate, you know. I okay. think, uh, Chris, you can bring our concerns mm -hmm. to Mr. LaMarche yeah. and see how, what he has to say. Sure. In, uh, mm -hmm. well, so we won't vote because he may mm -hmm. it. And to see how he wants to combine it, bring it back to us, and if we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think I have two. I just have a comment. May I just oh, ask for a clarification from Mrs. Antarctic? The when you said the missing measurable, just give me an idea of okay, what. Okay, so for, so for example, on the MASC, under responsibilities, it says, bullet number one, for example, says works with the principals to ensure that teachers develop and implement measurable objectives for each student. There's no um, expectations in this job description for measura measurable deliverables as mm -hmm. part of their responsibilities. Okay. All right, thank you. Anyone else would like uh, to I was comment? Just gonna, Sorry, um, Mrs. Antossi's comment about second in the command, I think, mm -hmm. pardon me, mm -hmm. that was the intention of us voting for the assistant superintendent, correct? That was kind of our view. One of the main things. One yeah. of the main things. I just didn't know what Mr. LaMarche's opinion was, and I, I, I don't expect an answer tonight, but I didn't know if he also agreed a second in command was a good idea. 
I haven't had that discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, again, I would just like to get his sure. Sure. thoughts mm -hmm. on that piece of it. I actually would have to say, that um, he gave us his opinion on having an assistant mm -hmm. superintendent mm -hmm. that would have second command authority, right. second in command authority, and so without speaking for him, it sounds as though he's but already no, told us great, that great. he had Mm -hmm. yeah, saw valid. I'm, I'm sure, you know, given the fact that in his district, which is about half the size, he has an assistant superintendent, so he understands and, and knows what that role is about. Um, so I would think that, you know, I agree with you, that he, he probably would tell you that he sees this as the, the second person in charge. Um, but yeah. as it said, as I said before, there are other positions in this district that um, by nature can also be second in command. So it really is, an, um, the, I would say more so the talent and skills of the person um, than it is just the job title. Yeah. Mm. So we'll table this on voting yeah. until okay. our next meeting. Right. Okay, that'll bring us up to consideration to ratify <clears throat> the agreement between the Dudley Charlton Regional School District and the Dudley Charlton Teachers Association 2019-2022 and Kathy and Jamie were on the negotiating team. Before they start, Dr. Nash, do you want to say anything? No, I am extremely uh, grateful uh, for the uh, two members of our school committee who spent uh, a number of hours along with the Director of Finance and Operations, and also uh, the members of the negotiating committee. As I said to them at conclusion, I have sat on uh, both sides of the table as a school committee member and also as a superintendent. And I have never worked uh, in a negotiating session, uh, seen a negotiation, uh, negotiations work as uh, collaboratively. <coughs> I almost thought we were doing win-win bargaining uh, <laughs> as, as, a, as opposed to really sitting there. I think it was a productive. Uh, respectful uh, collaboration uh, among people who I think respect and appreciate the work um, that you do as committee members and the fact that the committee appreciates uh, the work that the teachers do. So really uh, from someone who kind of is not used to that, uh, I didn't know what quite to expect as we went in. Uh, as I said to my group, uh, the committee members and to Rich, uh, oftentimes it's lawyers on both sides. Uh, that was not the case, and I am extremely happy uh, that it came to such a successful conclusion and that um, everybody is still uh, collegial and uh, speaks to one another, because sometimes that doesn't happen, quite frankly, so I appreciate that. And uh, I did receive a letter from the union president uh, Kevin Foley indicating that the union membership had ratified the three-year contract uh, for its members at 2%, uh, 2%, 2%, and 2% uh, for the next three years, beginning uh, at the end of August, actually, the contract expires. Uh, as members know also, we made a number of major changes, I think, to the betterment uh, of the association uh, in the contract, um, two that I think are important is the establishment of a sick leave bank, uh, which uh, I was extremely happy uh, that uh, that was able to uh, be uh, negotiated, and also uh, redefining uh, the ma and replacing the maternity and, and childbearing leave uh, with a more comprehensive leave called family and medical leave. So in, in addition to that, we made other language changes. Uh, but I was really happy on those too. So I have sign offs on all of them and one on the way. So as soon as we get that, we'll, I'll sit with Sandy and uh, give her all of that information so we can start putting that in. And uh, at the next, at the last um, EAC mm -hmm. meeting, I'll be sharing those documents uh, with the administrative team because many of them obviously impact them on an ongoing, regular basis. So anything that uh, will be something that they need to be aware of as their building administrators or district administrators, they will have that knowledge since it's now a ratified contract. So, so I don't know this if this is 
Terry or any of the other members want to say anything? No, thank you. So at this time, Kathy and Jamie will have the floor before we <coughs> take a vote to ratify it. You I just want to <coughs> agree with Dr. Nash. I haven't negotiated for many years. We had Joe Petrzak, Ray Chalk, Mike McConville, and <coughs> Joe Spiewak had done it a lot. So it was like almost being brand new again. It was. It went so smoothly. I think we could all agree. It went very smoothly. We, we, there was give and take. We wanted to show them we appreciated them and they understood our financial constraints. And we, I think it was everyone, as Dr. Nash said, it was a win-win for the district. And it's nice to be settled before the new superintendent mm -hmm. comes. The school year is over. Everyone knows what's happening. So I, I, it was a nice experience from my point of view. I completely agree. I think that um, I, I think I most appreciated being part of it to make sure that um, the people that represent the teachers union understood how much I appreciate our staff members. And so um, I think we were able to accomplish getting that point across very well. And I think that the only thing that held us in any um, difficulty for discussions was that we were c had concerns about the budget. And so that's our responsibility to be fiscally sound. And I think we definitely were. This committee definitely approached it that way. And I think that um, it was very respectful. And thank you for all your work. Thank you so much. Any other questions before we take <laughs> the vote? Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to ratify um, the, the contract for 2019 and 2022. So moved. Second. Any oh. more discussion? Yeah. Kathy, did you have something? No, I was getting ready to vote. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't her hand up. She's trying to move this so, meeting along. Uh, it's only 8.35. Anyone is, uh, any Not other? Uh, no discussion? Okay. All in favor? Motion carries. We have a contract okay. with the faculty. Well, Thank sure. you. Superintendent Lamarche will be happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And um, report of the policy review subcommittee proposed for action, and Mary will speak to that. Okay, okay. so I, we have the two policies um, here for, for before the school committee for second reading. So we can start with JCLB, which is inoculation of students. Okay, so uh, first I'll entertain a motion to waive the reading of the policy JCLB. Moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. Now, uh, this is our sec second reading and approval of policy JCLB, and I'll entertain a motion for approval. So Do I have a second? second? Okay, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. Okay. <coughs> so moving on to the second policy, IJOA school-sponsored field trips. This is here for second reading as well. Okay, good. And um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the waiving of the reading of IJOA. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. And uh, vote for approval in our second reading of IJOA. I'll entertain the motion. So moved. D discussion? Seeing Just one other thing okay, on go ahead, go ahead. page two on the top, the last bullet, students will be accompanied by a chaperone. I think we were going to remove that because it's on the second, under D, that was supposed to be removed. About the chap chaperones, it's not in the right spot, it's there twice anyways. It's actually under four as well. Oh, okay. So the, so we can take that out because it's covered under D, D super, yeah. super, uh, student oh, yeah. supervision. Oh, yeah, it's there three times. Take them both out. And I just leave the one on D. So that's what should be under supervision. Oh, it should stay under D because it's student supervision. should be yeah. removed from the two bullets on And we are paper. going to remove We are going to remove yeah. just some oversight. So that's just. Because we were talking, the last top of page two, the last bullet. Mm -hmm. And then the bottom under number four. We that should bullet. call you eagle eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, mm -hmm. I don't even just. <laughs> okay. One thing I don't know that it needs to be said, but I think it should be a matter of practice, is that I think we need to be having our forms be available or be made PDF so that that they're typed so that we can read them. I would agree with you. That's Absolutely, good. we talked yeah. about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since we didn't, we do not currently have forms <laughs> that are district wide. Mm -hmm. for out-of-state 
overnight, and that's one of the things we're working right. on as well as the international travel. Um, I think that might be the reason, but I don't disagree with you. Okay. They're hard to read. Okay. okay. I'm sure you have one tonight. You <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. Interesting. Just a question to clarify. The forms aren't part of the policy. No, no. we don't. I was just asking. Part of the policy generally. Generally, I say that yeah. because forms can change, and then we'd be bringing them back all the time. So, but there are some where we may consider that. Um, one might be international travel where the policy itself is really very brief, but the forms are more critical. And the chances of you having multiple changes to international travel policy forms are not, uh, probably is not going to happen because we really only do one trip a year. Well, my comment is that is sometimes including it in the policy, then it's easier to enforce. It because is. Because you, you have it uh, part of it. When we've been looking at some of the districts, they actually have like a, ma like a manual. And it, the, everything's in there. So when you, when someone is going on a field trip of any kind, day, overnight, out of state, international, or any combination, here it is. Here's the little manual. Here are all the directions. Check, 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 check. These are the forms for these. Mm -hmm. I actually saw one this afternoon. I liked a little bit be better. And since Mary and I have a meeting tomorrow, uh, there'll be some discussion. We're trying to unify. You know, get one set of forms across no matter whether you're going on an international field tri uh, tri uh, trip or a day trip. And the, the forms look similar in that the medical emergency, whatever the forms are going to be that we need. You don't need all of those. So we are developing, hopefully, I before I leave, helping out. Yeah. before I leave district forms or else it will be Superintendent Lamash. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Okay, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. So thank you, Mary, until next time. <laughs> You're welcome. And um, consideration to approve 2019-2020 school improvement plans, Charlton Elementary School and Mason Road School. Good evening. So uh, Charlton Elementary School, last year submitted a two-year school improvement plan. So I'm here today just to um, give you just, just some highlights of this year because we're going to be continuing it uh, next year. And I also wanted to um, thank Kenny because he's been on the school improvement school council for the past two years, resigned the day he won the election. But so he had a great uh, deal of input into our school improvement plan. Our first goal was to increase digital learning opportunities within the school. And the town, your support in uh, that Proposition 2.5 override and hiring technology integration people just brought technology from point A to point Z at Charlton Elementary this year. Mrs. Beverly you know, blew it out of the water, out of the park with everything that she, she did. And hats off to the Charlton Elementary staff for their part in accepting it, and in all of the fundraising that they've done, that they ra we raised five thousand dollars as a staff this year to add to technology for next year, and that was really hard work on their part, above and beyond what what they do. And so um, I'm really impressed by that. Our second goal was to increase community involvement within the school, and you know we did, as you can see, all of the things that um, I I put as accomplishments, I, I really want to emphasize the first one as far um, about the Overlook. The continued relationship that we have the, with the Overlook is very special to me. The intergenerational learning is just outstanding and this year, so we've always had a relationship with the Choose to be Nice Club where we've gone and they, we've done something with them and they've come and done stuff with us, but this year we also had a retired teacher that came down and adopted some of our students and read with them twice a week. And then the chorus from the Overlook came and put their concert on for us. And uh, that relationship is just wonderful. And um, I, I love them. And I, I, I plan to contact my person there and ask her if I could take her out for lunch and see if there's ways that we can expand it even further. Because I think it's great for the kids mm -hmm. to have that relationship. Um, and then our third goal was that the, which supported the school, the district improvement plan on the importance of everyone matters and I think we knocked that out of the park all kids had that a t-shirt 
and we had a bulletin board. We had it. Um, we had an Everyone Matters Day. We we just had a buddy bench donated, which is really going to show kids that everyone does matter. When that bench gets put outside, I can't wait to um, to see it being used in the right way, and hopefully we won't have kids that don't have somebody to play mm -hmm. with because everyone does matter and our interpersonal competency one where provide continuing support for social and emotional development again the override and the the you know the 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 planning on your part to hire adjustment counselors having mrs coddington really help support that this year before besides just having an anxiety rep um, presentation she held a book club and Twice as many kids were able to be seen. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to that being expanded as well. Does anyone have any questions? Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thanks. <laughs> well, now on to Mason Road. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So this year certainly has been quite a learning curve in my professional um, experience, given that I've never developed a school improvement plan as a leader, more maybe as a participant. Um, and I did go, you know, we had a great team of individuals, both staff and parents, and I had a, an amazing mentor who kind of helped me and guided me through this process. So thank you, Mrs. Pacheco, and to my other colleagues who have also helped me through this process. Um, I, this year, I, I did bring to our school um, council looking to make more of a two-year plan because looking at the plan that was established last year and kind of looking at the things that we've been doing at Mason Road, there have been some significant changes right right from the start from our, um, Mrs. Parmley previously had her kids of character where we wanted to be uniform with our sister school and we brought in the Choose to be Nice program. So just kind of establishing that and getting that up and running. Um, but then taking a look at our, our technology integration specialist, looking at our strategic goals, um, and just, just overall our school and kind of focusing on what do we really want to target moving forward in the next two years. With the, um, our technology goal, again, kind of reflecting back on the school improvement, um, the strategic plan, Previously in the in the um, improvement plan, it focused on kind of getting some students from Shepherd Hill School to kind of come and work with the students at Mason Road School. That did not happen this year, and that's because of just all the different changes and kind of picking up and taking off. Um, but there has there has been a lot of great integration with our technology um, specialists and getting into the classrooms and teachers teachers buying into that as well. But one of the cool things that did come up this year that we saw happening was students in kindergarten did a, um, a particular unit on wolves, and they were able to see a live habitat of wolves represented on a screen in front of them. The school council wants to take it a step further and do more of those virtual classrooms, whether it's virtual pen pals, so to say, right down to contacting Charlton Elementary, doing it with our sister schools, doing it with higher level schools, doing it with schools in different areas. Um, and again, that's bringing our teachers together with our integration technology specialist who I would like to see kind of grow and develop a little bit more as well as she's new to our district. But I do see what um, Ms. Beverly has been putting out on even Twitter and it's, it's profound and, and we want that at Mason Road School as well. So we are taking a little bit of a lead, but kind of bringing our own twist into how we want to see it kind of manifest itself given our population and just the amount of student interaction, parent volunteers, and, and things like that. So we do really have to target a little bit more specifically on the technology piece of the school improvement plan just to kind of um, narrow it down and, and see ourselves be more successful. The next... Um, thing that we definitely want to work on where we didn't really focus on it this year again um, kind of changing from the kids of character to the choose to be nice but bringing in that everyone matters mentality you know we always talk about students first we always talk about being kind respectful we're a family here at school and we're here six and a half hours a day but really having students and staff like understand that this is about all of us we're in this together we're a team nobody's better than us me nobody's better than you we're really going to work together and, and bring some of those, just that motto in and of itself. You know, right now we're looking at making connections and creating memories, but we want to do it all together. Um, so we will be seeing that implemented and started throughout the course of this upcoming school year. 
and hopefully will be as successful as um, my colleagues in other school areas in bringing that to just being a forefront of everybody's mind when they walk through the building knowing that it's truly valued um, and not just a saying. Um, another thing that we have been doing at the Mason Road School that I do feel is, is great is looking at being able to meet the various levels of students from the students that need the extra doses of to the students who need to be um, challenged because they've already accomplished and achieved and succeeded. And we're doing a lot of that through our RTI in using a walk to learn motto where students, we take the data, we evaluate it, and we kind of group students according to their abilities. And we have seen significant growth in student performance on these assessments that we use to track how they're doing. Um, I'm not a big data person, but you can clearly see how the specific groupings for 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, have really allowed the students to grow and foster and not feel embarrassed or ashamed because everybody sitting around them is kind of struggling with the same thing or overachieving at the same level. Um, we, again, having the school adjustment counselors paired with the school psychologist, we've been doing a lot of the mindfulness, the um, social thinking curriculum across the building. So we do the social thinking curriculum in the first grade class. Every classroom has the school psychologist going in and teaching a specific uh, lesson. In kindergarten, we have our adjustment counselor going in doing the mindfulness or the STEP program. In the language, the vocabulary is very consistent across the building where we're encouraging expected, unexpected behaviors. Teachers are learning more with this kind of involvement and we just want to see that progress even more so that it becomes just as, as normal for kids to s say hello in the morning. You know, they can re respond with, yeah, that was an unexpected behavior, I'm sorry. Um, and again, just the team that we have is, is amazing. Then um, the communication, um, again, just having students understand that your body language is telling me you're angry, you're upset, you're happy, you're excited. Let's take a look around, let's see how everybody else feels because little guys at this age, they might think you're playing with them and you're really giving them that, I'm not really happy with choices you've made right now. So having them buy into understanding that we really need to look at a person as a whole doesn't mean we're going to be mad forever. We're disappointed, but we can move on, and we've really got to work hard to make better choices. And our Choose to Be Nice program has really been helpful with that because they earn the mouse cards, which turn into a special luncheon. And, and it's been a great experience for me just working with these little guys and seeing how they continue to grow and foster and, and model the expected behaviors we want to see day in, day out. And one thing I am going to say on a personal level, I do want to try to do more of the um, building-based fundraising. I didn't really realize that that was an option. So I think, you know, there are quite a few things I'd like to see happen at Mason Road from a personal level, such as a wonderful sign in the front of the building that can acknowledge the last day of school or happy retirements or whatever it may be. Um, we don't have any display cases in our in our building at all. We they're, the walls are our displays, but I think having something just kind of nice to shelter those pieces of work that are really, really, you know, meaningful and have a special place in everybody's heart. So things like that that just need a few little things that I think whether we work with our PTO, um, our families are amazing, the staff in and of itself, I think we're off to a good start for next year. So I'm very happy to be able to see this through. Thank you. Any questions for Jen? I just have a couple of I just have a question probably for both of you um, where you're doing a lot of the social skills curriculum um, it's it's amazing to see it being done in the classroom and everything I think another component to that would be to add communication with the parents so that we can understand mm -hmm. what exactly like the common terms that you're mm -hmm. saying and the common language Absolutely. that then it can translate to home yep. and it's a nice seamless transition for us. That, that's actually a great point because I talked to our school psychologist in the, um, the adjustment counselor about parent trainings. Mm -hmm. um, Will Gametto did one this year that was, it was great and we had quite a, he did two of them this year, they had a great turnout. 
but you're absolutely right. If we're, you know, we can have handouts to say, if your child comes home and says, I'm in the red zone, well, what does that mean to a parent? You know, if you watch that movie Inside Out where all the little feelings are represented by colors, I mean, we're bringing that into the classroom, but if you haven't seen that movie because your children are older or whatnot, then, um, and you maybe have, you know, these grandparents that are raising their, their grandbabies, I think a parent night is going to be most important. And I think, too, like not only just a parent night, because I think there's so many of us parents that have like little guys mm -hmm. that they go to bed really early, mm -hmm. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. And, and, you know, so it's, it's kind of hard to always get to those things. But even if you were able to put like a page on your website that showed little videos yep. of, hey, Absolutely. this is what it means, or here's some great resources for you. I mean, yep. You know, just even if district the newsletters, yeah, yeah, like absolutely. Or tape your session and make it a right. webinar that mm -hmm. parents could watch in the time that they have available. Yeah. That's a great, great right. suggestion. Yeah, thank you. No, I think yeah. absolutely. I'm glad Mrs. Caminati went first because that was I was tagging along on your comments that um, I think too. Just a suggestion, more um, f that feedback loop to the parents, social media. Um, I don't know if Mason Road has the Facebook page or anything. I don't hey, mean we've to got put Twitter. you on the spot. We're making okay. some gains. Yeah, no Twitter at <laughs> Trout Elementary. No Facebook, yeah. but Twitter, we do have so Twitter. So I just made the comment that it's just to keep people informed and let the community know what's going on. I think that loop is important. Um, my second comment, more just your um, fundraising comment, um, Mrs. Pacheco got me onto the wonderful world of butter braids. Um, <laughs> and they are outstanding. They are not very good for you. Have you ever had them? They're excellent. Oh, you've got to buy them. You've got to buy one. The butter braids, they can explain what they are. Mrs. Cabal, I'm coming straight to you next year. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to order one. Just to order one. Just order one. Just order one. From, from the Charlton School. No, I'm teasing. Hey, hey, hey. I'm giving you a hard time. Thank you. Next is the Heritage School and Dudley L. Well, I've graduated everybody. I'm going before Kathleen. <laughs> Um, I just want to thank you all for your support. It's it's so nice to be able to sit back there and know that um, we're a team and that we all work together. Uh, that's really, really important. For for Delhi Elementary School, just some of the highlights of this year, my plan is also a two-year plan, so I'm working on the second year of this plan. So many of my goals haven't really changed. It's just furthering and furthering the goals and adding more to it. So some of the highlights from this year, I think one of the big highlights for us is um, the, the project-based learning that's going on. That was our district focus. And in the elementary schools, it's taken on a life of its own. And the teachers are really into planning these units. Uh, fourth grade did like four units. The second grade and third grade each did a unit as well. So they're really finding the, the value in having the children doing these projects. Um, also, we started some restorative practices at Dudley Elementary School as part of our social emotional learning. So instead of having a child have a consequence with just a consequence, combined with that consequence is also some sort of restorative practice where they're doing something good that doesn't equate to the, the, the negative aspect. So an example might be that a child um, had an altercation with another student a physical altercation or something like that. They might lose their recess time, but instead of losing their recess time and sitting in the office, they lose their recess time to go and work in a second grade classroom and help second graders. So a lot of times they come out of it and they say, wow, that was really fun. <laughs> and, and you know, the teachers are like, wait a minute, that wasn't such a great consequence. Well, it was because they lost their recess, but they're also finding the good in what they can do that doesn't coincide with the negative behaviors. Um, another thing that we did this year was uh, initiated some family game nights, which were a whole lot of fun. And it's just a family, each grade level had its own family game night. Just a community engagement, getting the families in. Second grade, we did family bingo. Third grade, we did family feud, complete with all the bells and whistles and all the, <laughs> all the music that goes with it. And then fourth grade, we did a cornhole tournament, a family cornhole tournament. So those were a lot of fun, brought our families in. We do a lot with our with our data analysis. Anybody in the district who works here knows that I'm, I'm, I think I am the data queen. <laughs> I really am, and and it's something that we value very much and that we use in our day to day.
process. We, as a matter of fact, we just had data days today. <laughs> so, you know, even though it's the two days before school gets out, it's important for us to review that data, to celebrate, to concentrate, to innovate for next year. Uh, installing smart boards, we're still working on it. We are not in every classroom, but we're still working on installing them. We have our Heroes After School program, homework program, which is really important and used by many of our students. Although our homework policy doesn't have them doing as much written paperwork, it does give them the opportunity to get that work done as well as do special activities following that. This year we also instituted a robotics club, which was very popular and had a waiting list all year. So next year we have a new technology integration specialist coming in uh, because our technology integration specialist is actually moving into a fourth grade classroom. But the, the person who's coming in is also interested, so we're going to be able to offer twice the number of students our robotics club, as well as girls who code and boys who code. So we've had all those programs come in and have been very, very popular. Uh, DS Garden Club, I have to tell you a little bit about, that has really expanded. We started it with just a few students, and we presented one time here for school committee. It's really expanding. We're up to like 20 to 25 students. Their parents are also joining us as well to help in the, in the efforts. And this year, if anybody's available, on July 20th, we are actually going to be on the Dudley Women's Club Garden Tour. So we're very excited about that. We've got um, we've got art pieces to go with it. We're, the the children are going to sell lemonade, mm. and they're going to have corn muffins or something like that as well. And we'll be in, open to the public to come and enjoy our gardens. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Social emotional learning. Oh, I'll, I'll go into the technology integration specialist. That has been a huge impact as as Lori had said and, and Jen that's been that's had a huge impact on our curriculum uh, it's it's going into the classrooms and really giving that 21st century kind of lesson and modeling it for teachers and they're just they're just taking off with it as well um, I already talked about project-based learning and we will continue with that and exploring one of the things I will tell you that we plan to do next year and that kind of goes um, in a couple different goal areas is to have a family cultural night and with that cultural night will be a project-based learning activity for the entire school so each grade level will adopt two continents that they will do kind of a tour travel type of um, scenario and then the staff is going to adopt one continent and then we're also going to invite parents that have a background a cultural background to have a hallway for themselves so the, the so the parents will travel around the hallway so that they can and the students so that they can travel around the world we're really excited hoping that we can really get some a lot of uh, feedback from that so you're welcome to all let you all know you can come to that as well <laughs> Um, increasing our technology, our programs that we use on on day-to-day -day basis and, and provide for families at home as well to use, such as RAS Kids, Extra Math, Splash Math, um, Freckle, all those. We also included, we also added an anti-bullying uh, library that I have available in my office, which also fits very well with restorative practices when I do have students who are visiting with me. Um, we go through the books and we might find a nice book that explains that, <laughs> that kind of talks about the skill that they need to work on, such as bad, bad attitude instead of bad attitude or something like that. Very cute books, but they really do teach a lesson and give us that language to talk about. We as well use a lot of, with my background of course, we use a lot of social thinking and and, um, and responsive classroom. We're still using that to give the common language to our students and staff as well. This year I hope to create a safe and supportive leadership team. And with that team, we're really going to be working on office referrals and having positive office referrals, not just the negative ones, but coming up with a system so that we can start tracking better uh, what our students are doing. And 
And talking about the, I'm just going to skip back to interpersonal competencies and going through that and just talking about the global awareness where we're going to um, try to adopt classrooms, whether it be international or local, even if it's maybe adopting some classrooms from, from Kathleen so that the students can do Google Hangouts, et cetera, mm -hmm. to share their ideas or to share projects and other activities. That's kind of us in a nutshell. Any questions? I have a question that you said. Sure. Raz Kids, Splash Math, and Freckle, are those apps? Are yes. Those, so are those apps that are school related or could parents? Parents do use them, as a matter of fact. Um, IXL, Raz Kids, um, Splash Math, they all have their accounts available. And typically, those are our homework assignments. It's mm -hmm. just practice extra math to practice their math facts. And they can use RAS Kids or books to read 20 minutes, is what our. Okay. Are those available during the summer? Yes. Okay. Is, is Prodigy, is that, is that the right one that our students use in Heritage? Se several classrooms have Prodigy. Oh, my, ch yeah. my child thinks he's playing Zelda all day long, but huh. he's answering these math problems <laughs> and loves it. Like, so yeah, there's good. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Cameron has RAS Kids at Child Mail. Okay. Um, and he likes it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'll just hit a few highlights as all our school improvement plans are driven by the district strategic plan. We all have very uh, similar highlights, I think. So I'll hit a few. I, for the first time, have designed a two-year plan. Um, I've always done a yearly plan, so uh, this is a change for me. But I'll highlight some of from each of the large strategic goal. So strategic goal number one of our district strategic plan is communications, community engagement, and partnerships. Um, an event that we had for the second time in a row that really brought in the community, our unified arts teachers, um, th they planned a night where we brought in the Charlton Police, um, the, dis the new district food, um, manager that we have here in the district, the Charlton PTO, and we call it an evening with heritage school specialists, but it really is a, a nice way to bring in community resources. Uh, families had the opportunity to visit each of their specialist classroom. Uh, we had a musical petting zoo. They created whiz whimsical birds with model magic with Mrs. Rawson and explored the safety home from the Charlton Fire Department. I also wanted to comment that we had Many of our classrooms, as an offshoot of project-based learning, have for the last few years really adopted Genius Hour. So Genius Hour is a actually developed by co large companies like Google, where they say, okay, you can have 20% of your time working with us, some companies it's 10%, to do something you're passionate about. So we call it Genius Hour, and for most of our teachers they set aside, who are engaged in it, they set aside an hour a week. And students truly can research, um, present, work with a partner, sometimes they work individually, but something that they have an interest in. Um, the young man who did Ed and Sharon, in his fourth grade classroom, his genius hour was learning how to play the guitar. He did not know how to play the guitar until he said, in genius hour, I've always wanted to play the guitar. So it's, it's an opportunity for them. But this year, in looking at strategic goal and bringing in the community, we had students from Bay Path Regional Vocational Technical High School come in in a couple of our third grade classrooms, share their knowledge of electricity, and we had a visit from the Robotics Club of Shepherd Hill because we had a student whose Genius Hour project was on robotics. So it was a nice way to bring in some of our um, community interest in the school as well. Strategic goal number two, on the district strategic plan is the climate, culture, and civility. And I will have to echo um, what Mrs. Pacheco had mentioned, having that elementary adjustment counselor, um, and we share a phenomenal one in Mrs. Coddington, has really provided a huge boost to our students who need that extra support at school. We also use the zones of regulation and her work with Mrs. Brothers, our school psychologist, to weave this further, now we have two um, trained staff members who can work this into our classroom it has been incredibly helpful. And strategic goal number three, curriculum instruction and assessment. And again, I will echo, um, both everyone tonight said the piece with the technology support, having that we were able to add an additional Chrome cart, but 
the most important and most critical piece was having that integration specialist. Mrs. Daly Cook has been with the district for many years, but this was, and she's always had to go between two schools. So having time in her schedule to sit with a teacher and say, all right, let's now bring in this Chrome cart that we have to utilize, and I will model, I will guide, I will support you, was a critical piece for teachers. And our students, I will say, Mrs. Pacheco was mentioning technology, um, have just come leaps and bounds with their everything that they are doing. And now that we do MCAS on Chromebooks, they are just so much more highly skilled um, with using technology. Uh, and that, so that's a couple, those are, are just highlights from this year. And just looking forward for the next two years, again, this will be year two through the District of Project Based Learning. Our Wax Museum is a, f a fine example of a culmination of a project-based learning unit. Enhanced techno technological resources for our computer labs. The Dudley Charlton Education Foundation provided a couple of our third grade teachers, Mrs. O'Donnell and Ms. Montville, wrote a grant together for Lego We Do. So that's combining technology and our computer integration into classroom STEM lessons. We have utilized our Ozobots to a higher level um, with the addition of Mrs. Daly Cook. That's one of her passions. And we have for a few years um, had little bits and every year we grow our kit of little bits and that is a constant in our after the bell enrichment classes for children. Um, Mrs. Brown is my little bits um, cheerleader and has done that for several years. Also looking at um, our academic competencies and critical thinking and problem solving, we are all embarking on this co-teaching initiative at each of the schools. I think in the next two years that is going to really pay off for all students in those co-teaching classrooms. So that will be a big, um, a big change for us over the next couple of years. Um, and I truly believe we're going to see all students benefiting from that co-teaching model. We, uh, project-based learning, again, through staff meetings and through our students' work in their classrooms. Google Classroom expansion. We had one at our school, one of our school council meetings, one of the parents said, you know, I see my child doing all these homework assignments, and, but I'm not really sure how I would check in and see what they're doing. So we did, at our school council, we had a training for parents on what Google Classroom, and Mrs. Daly Cook is going to do that in the fall. Before and after, probably our Meet the Teacher Night or our first parent conference, come in and come, in, come into the computer lab and see how to use Google Classroom so you can see what your child is doing. And the la our personal competence competencies, empathy and um, looking at initiative, self-direction and resiliency. Again, the zones curriculum, we're going to work to expand that. Mrs. Brothers and Mrs. Coddington are going to work together this summer to once you teach it, we don't want to walk away from it. So now they've done it in all third grade classrooms, providing teachers with more support. When they walk out of the classroom, how do they support the students using the language and um, the terminology in the zones curriculum? We have, for the last two years, I know we talked about, had mentioned parent, making sure parents know. And we have had parent evenings, so we've had, uh, I call it the parent seminar series for the last couple of years. This year, Mrs. Coddington did a presentation on anxiety and how, how to help your child with anxiety. Last year, Mrs. Brothers did one on the zones of regulation and self-regulation with students. And Mrs. Houghton, one of my third grade teachers, has done yoga and mindfulness. We plan to do that parent presentation series again next year. But I like the idea of finding a way to get the materials into the hands of the parents as well, because not all our parents can join us for an evening event. So, but that is something we're looking at doing um, again next year. And um, the last piece, that interpersonal competencies. One of the strate district strategic plan is about um, effective communication and global awareness, and that project-based learning truly lends itself to building their effective communication. You could see here um, being able to present their ideas to others, 
really has made a difference in the way our students learn and they have those project-based learning presentations at all grade levels and cultural enrichment we have had for several years and we did it in collaboration with Dudley Elementary um, the African um, a museum in is a passion of Mrs. Rawson's and they will be back with us, us this year for um, a global awareness program so. thank you any questions for Mrs. Pastore I just wanted to tell you that um, being able to see the animal research presentation grow from two years ago till this year was unbelievable when my daughter did it it was super intense and great and she worked on it for a long time and she was proud of what she did but when the second graders this year presented their animal research I wish I could have told all of you to come the excitement that filled that school and then they figured out how to record each student and you could flash the little code and you could go home and have that recording about those kids and what they said and how proud they were and when you went in and they were all standing at their desk so proud to tell you I, and then it was all tied into art, how they created the animal out of the clay. It was awesome. And it was so cool to see it grow from two years ago to what it is today. That was awesome. And you know, it's the, the, to see the look on the students' faces, mm -hmm. the pride. And we do know that that, for teachers, that's a lot of work, a mm -hmm. lot of time. <laughs> so each year to grow it incrementally, um, Mrs. Terry was mentioning, so what Mrs. Daly Cook was able to do in her role now with technology integration specialist was support the teachers so that each student could record their presentation so that when parents came in all they had to do was take their cell phone read the QR code reader and they could go home again and listen to their child's presentation so little by little having additional technology having a having the additional support personnel really makes a difference so and it was cool that we could share it with other family members that couldn't attend and grandparents and it just expanded it so much it, it was really a pride building experience for my son so thank you that's why I use that word. Okay. <laughs> thank you Thank you. Thank you so much so that brings us up to the consideration to approve 2019 2020 school handbooks and the Charlton Middle School there are no changes so we don't and Dudley Middle School and Dudley Middle School handbook. Too. there are no changes the to the uh, I don't think so we've done that approval, but I yeah I told her we, okay. we didn't okay, we always yeah, accept I didn't think them. so but it was on here yeah uh, yeah I had just so um, Mr. Chaplin <laughs> Okay. They won six four. Yeah. They're going to the championship game on Saturday night. Saturday night. Yep. I don't know where it would be. They were at Worcester State today, so uh, it might be back there. It might be. They beat Grafton. It's the winner of the second game, so I'm not really sure who the the winner is. Their opponent is yet because the second game was after them. Okay. So a uh, couple of uh, adjustments and a couple of additions. So the first one centered around uh, student record. Uh, we had an issue this year where a student who uh, turned 18 and uh, then proceeded to uh, attempt to um, not allow her parents her record. Uh, and our handbook says that uh, 18 years old uh, has the right belonging to them, which really isn't the case. Our lawyer got involved, and uh, we had to make some adjustments there where basically um, a parent can request the child's record when they're 35 if, if, if they want to. Um, so uh, just making those adjustments in the handbook to be more clear. Um, legally correct. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, we, yeah. We so we make it legally correct. It. correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. There was just a misconception. There's, there's, yep. there's uh, students that turn 18 that think they can dismiss themselves. Oh, right, right. No, you cannot. Right. <laughs> um, when they leave here, they can. When they graduate, they can dismiss themselves all they want. Um, uh, in addition, under guidance uh, in the handbook, uh, this past summer in September, um, we had uh, many students, uh, a, a little bit of a bump, uh, who were signed up for AP courses decided to uh, wanted to withdraw from those in September and it creates a significant ripple 
Um, they uh, either didn't or they took on the challenge and then didn't feel like doing the summer work or whatever the reason was. So we added to add a, a little bit of language in there around setting a deadline when you wanted to do that um, simply because uh, if we have, I'm just going to make these numbers up, if we have 35 kids and they signed up for an uh, AP um, uh, physics course, uh, that's two classes. Uh, and then if five or six drop out because I didn't feel like doing the summer work, now I have two classes of uh, 10 or 12, which, which is a little low. That would be one class of 22. Mm -hmm. So you know how that how it works. Mm -hmm. So we just had to have some language in there and some buffers in there around um, just having them um, meet a deadline. And then if, if, if this is always exceptions. In September, if someone comes in and says, listen, I did all the work, but I just can't, then, then we'll review that. But I need to have some buffers. There was a, a little bit of a more than usual bump that happened in September. So we come up with this language and we're very happy with it. Like, sure, go ahead. Deadline like August 1st? Are you, are you no, that, it, it, would, it would shift every year. Right now, it's it's our schedule gets made uh, by the end of July. We have to let people right. know. Mm -hmm. So, and, it, it, and there's there's a lot of logistics that go into it. So we're set. We're we're putting some things in before school ends, where uh, every AP student meets with that teacher and says, "This is what the summer work is. This mm -hmm. is your how you can do it. Uh, this is how you can meet the deadlines." So I believe the the the. The date is uh, like July 10th. You don't want to put that in the book. I don't yeah, want it because it might. July, it, it, but if you said by the end of July or something, you don't want to be vague. Yeah, I, be vague. I want to purposely be vague. Okay. They'll know each okay, year. Okay. Every every AP kid knows okay. now. The other kid is 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 the other type of student is that we have students and and, and I encourage this, uh, but we had to put a couple of buffers in where. You know, we have some students that take four or five AP oh, yeah, classes, sure. and I at least wanted to put a buffer and says that's a lot, you know. And I'm going to support you and do whatever you need to do. But I wanted to get the parents involved because, you know, many times I'll have parents in August saying, "Well, I didn't know he signed up for those," right, yeah. <laughs> or she yeah. signed up for those. And I'm like, "Well, so now we have a form that they sign off on. Okay, Understand, yeah. there's a lot of rigor involved and a lot of summer work." Uh, you know, I get phone calls in the end of August saying, ah, he got involved in football and, you know, he really couldn't do the work, so he wants to switch into something else. It just creates a ripple throughout the schedule that's made. So just uh, just a, a few little hurdles in there. To do you have a deadline in. for other non, like say, uh, if someone's taking French 4 that's not AP, is there a deadline? Yeah, it's usually 10 change? days after. It's usually 10 is days after the school start. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. Yep. I have a quick question yep. for you um, on your B. It's on page 2 where you have students will be required to sign a form indicating their commitment to the AP courses. Okay. Do you see that? For B, schedule change advanced placement courses. Right there. Oh, right here. Yeah, okay. Um, yep. I didn't know if you wanted a bit to be students and parents. Yeah, I mean, we, could probably, we could probably do that. We do have a parent sign-off, so it's just, I think it's adding that in yeah. there. We do have a parent okay. sign-off in there right now. Good. Okay. Um... Next one was uh, just, it, it seems like every year there's an attendance provision that we have to continue to add. So uh, currently, we're just kind of eliminating some, some um, uh, language in there around uh, where it says providing all other absences have received prior to the acceptance by the administrator. Uh, and we want to add all medical notes must be submitted within 10 school days of the student's return to school. So what happens is April comes around and somehow they come up with a medical note for 50 tardies in the, first, the fall semester. Um, and uh, many of them aren't even for appointments. They're just symptomatic with something. That, and listen, the reality nowadays is you go into a doctor, they'll write whatever you want. So I had to have a little bit of a buffer in there to say, you gotta get it to me within 10 days, you know, for it to be considered. Uh, literally, I had, I had a, a parent a doctor note write off I, didn't, I called the doctor and I said, do you understand what you wrote? Uh, there was 50 absences he excused in April for the first semester. And it's real, all on credit loss. You know, and we're flexible around credit loss and you can earn it back if you have good attendance. But um, we, had, we felt like we had to put this provision in there about 10 days. Mm -hmm. Generally, I will tell you, other high schools, it's five days. I thought 10 was generous. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Ask, <laughs> ask me next year. Yeah, right. <laughs> ask me next year. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. So if th this policy will be if, if they don't get it in 10 days, it doesn't count. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I agree. I just wanted to yeah. verify. Yeah. yeah. And listen, I, I, I will talk to people and, and understand situations, but uh, I've told several parents over the last couple of years, I've had students that uh, were fighting cancer that, that made it to school more than some of these, some of these children. You know, and, and they have to realize that. You have, you, I, I can't, 
I can't, um, I can't recreate class time. You know, I, I really can't. Yeah. And, and the other part of this is, and it's going to ripple throughout the district, is chronic absenteeism, whether excused or not, is part of our accountability system now. Mm -hmm. So we have to continue to lo look at this as we go forward and put, put some things in place. It's, it's an issue across uh, many, many schools. Part of the challenge at the high school level has always been uh, students earn their grade, but the district owns the credit. And so if a student can be absent from a teacher's class for more than 10 percent and still pass, then there's some problem there, generally. Mm -hmm. so, and, and that's the challenge that you always had years ago uh, before you had that. You'd have kids whose parents would say, well, they can still pass this class <laughs> and they haven't been here. Well, how come? So really, really, how important is that teacher if they can still pass it? So, you know, we all struggled with that over the years, and uh, there even were challenges in court with respect to who owns what, who owns the grade. And there was a test case um, that basically said, kids own the grade, schools give credit, because you approve that as part of, you know, the handbook, where you say, these are the graduation requirements and these are the credits, the Carnegie credits. You approve that, and therefore it's policy, if you will. So. Mm -hmm. Very interesting challenge that yeah. happened many years ago when we were all struggling with attendance at the high school level. Yeah. And part of the learning of that is, yeah. you know, we have a, if someone's for the first time got credit loss, they can meet with Mr. Reza and I, mm -hmm. and the parent can come in, and we can put them on a probationary status and look at their attendance. They'll still lose the credit, but if their attendance turns around for the rest of the year, we'll give it back to them. So we want them to be in school. That's, 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 mm -hmm. the, that's the, uh, the, what we want to correct. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a lot of things in place with that, so hopefully we'll, I'm sure next year there'll be something else. I'll be going down the five days to the <laughs> ten days. Um, the last thing is, it, I was surprised that we didn't have this in the handbook, and, and it only took me three years to catch it. Um, but uh, we don't have any language in there about college visits. Now, I, I, I let kids go on college visits. They bring a note back, but it never really made it into the handbook. So now it's officially in the handbook. It should read... It shouldn't say students. It should say 11th and 12th grade students. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that a freshman or a sophomore is going to go on a college visit. I did have one this year, though. Uh, I had a band uh, student who went to uh, Alabama. He's a freshman. Mm -hmm. And they said, can you come down and we'll show you around. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> well, it's, it's the Taj Mahal uh, <laughs> of marching bands. Right? Yeah. Um, so it should read uh, 11th and, and 12th grade students who visit colleges for the purposes yeah. of official tours and information sessions may have up to three days per year excused for the purpose. So wh what that really looks like is I really strongly encourage uh, junior, juniors in their, in, their, in their second semester to go, start looking. Okay, and then there maybe there's a couple more that you do, you know, at the beginning of, of the senior year. But we'll we'll be flexible around around those things. Do, um, excuse me. Do you think that three days is enough? I've been noticing that a lot of college visits are, are uh, preview days or on Fridays, and if they're going a distance and they mm -hmm. need to go to more than one college, they're going to eat that. Yeah, up this is just to one. excuse the absence. Okay. So they get six excused absences no matter what on okay. top of this. Oh, okay. So right. there's always some flexibility okay. in there. You know, kid needs to, has the sniffles, doesn't want to go to the doctor. The they already get six, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so, and, and I'm open to people talking to me, saying, hey, I already used my three, I'm going to, I'm going to two more. Mm -hmm. I'm open to that. And that's it, folks. Any questions so, before we take a uh, vote on approving the handbook with the corrections? No? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the corrections for the Shepherd Hill handbook. So, second. Just any more discussion? Stephanie, did you have something? No, I was already oh. voting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all in favor. I am. I'm just moving it along. Yeah, I don't blame you. Mm -hmm. Keep going, Stephanie. Okay. okay. Um, Raise your hand. We've, we're, that brings us to G. Consideration to approve revised middle school and high school substitute coordinator positions. And Dr. Nash, you can speak to that. Yes. Um, as a result of Frontline uh, being uh, the system that we're bringing in, the sub-management system, there was a need to go back and 
We couldn't revise a job description because it didn't exist. <laughs> so we really had to write one based on uh, conversations with the principals uh, at the middle school and high school. They've seen this. We've reviewed this. However, I'm going to make a correction in this. I think it, there's a redundancy here. If you look at bullet number four, which says communicate with administrators, uncovered staff due to absence, and then you look, provide a list of uncovered staff to administration prior to the start of the school day. Mm -hmm. uh, I would eliminate uh, bullet four because I think bullet five says the same thing. Mm -hmm. So we would ask that you would approve this. Uh, typically this wouldn't <laughs> come forward to you, but last year this is not uh, part of the DCTA collective bargaining agreement. This is my understanding. Um, these were stipend positions that were created. Uh, initially, uh, the uh, stipend for the high school is, was was three thousand. We into, we believe that this is really you know this minimizes um, their job, basically cuts it in half, and the uh, stipend at the uh, middle schools uh, was uh, twenty five hundred. So this represents half stipends. So. And these are for one year only. It's a transition year. We would see these not going away, uh, going away, excuse me, the following year. Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve the revised middle school slash high school three mm -hmm. substitute coordinator positions, and it's just for the year. So moved. Do I have a second? Okay, any more discussion? I do have one. You brought up the issue, Dr. Nash, if a mm -hmm. teacher goes home in the middle of the day, mm -hmm. This person who's in charge is, is usually pulled out of class. Can we put something where they don't have to do that? That should follow the administration. Shouldn't they it? recognize that. I think that we're fine. Bullet, no, I think we're fine with okay, that. Okay, because you have that, that conversation. Yep. Okay. No. All right. We're good. Okay. And they, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any Sorry. other discussion? Saying none, all in favor? Motion carries. It's unanimous. Uh, consideration of request for overnight travel. Uh, Dr. Nash? Yes. Uh, you have uh, in your packet a uh, request from uh, Becky Boussier from the music department at the high school who's requesting approval for approximately 148 students to travel to Ohio to participate in the show Choir Camps of America. The dates of the trip are July 6th through the 14th, a total of nine days. Approximately 15 chaperones will be in attendance. The trip will be paid for by students. As uh, Ms. Boussier notes in the informational packet she provided, the round trip cost is $375. That includes the cost of the transportation <coughs> by bus, the two overnight hotel stays, and breakfast and dinner on the way out and back. I'm assuming everything else they get when they're sleeping overnight somewhere in this camp. Uh, departure will be on Saturday, July 6. Uh, they'll travel part of the way, stay overnight in Pennsylvania, arrive and camp on Sunday, ret return trip on the same uh, manner on the 13th, stay overnight, do part of the trip, and return on the 14th. Okay, I'll entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Saying that all in favor? Okay. Okay, go ahead. I think she, you know, she talked about the round trip cost is three seventy five, mm -hmm. but I think we need to talk about the fact that the f true cost to a student is going to be that three seventy five plus, isn't it, the seven fourteen? Yes. Mm -hmm. They pay for the trip itself, right? And then the three seven five is for the the transportation, the, transportation, right. the hotel right. that's per being provided by um, Ms. Boussier. Right. It's a music camp, and that's no, the, no, I know no, that. No. I just uh, want to make sure that yes. we're clear on what is right. the true cost. Yeah. For the the yeah. three seventy five only includes the overnight and all of that, but there is an additional cost. Yes. Okay. So I just didn't you know with yeah. with our field trip application where they're going the whole time, do we want to have... We we have a different breakdown of costs. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure we're clear. Any other uh, discussion? Okay. All in favor? Go ahead, Kenny. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. You sure? The, yeah, I'm sure. No, no, no. The, um, I know the policy we just approved tonight requires 30 days, and obviously this is with less than that. Right. So just making that comment mm -hmm. that it's not mm -hmm. following policy. Right. 
I think sometimes, uh, hence the reason why some of the policies you, that typically would impact staff, once a school committee approves them, you really need to share them with your principals mm -hmm. because otherwise they're the ones that have to oversee this and, and if they're not aware of it, then certainly they can't make their staff aware of it. And oftentimes they go back into those nice books that we all put together and no one pays much attention and oh, gee, I had a deadline. Mm -hmm. So hopefully some of these will get shared if we can get them done in time. If not, I mean, you know, this is typically what happens when you know, when a policy has some impact in, in, a, in a district and you want to share that. So. And Katie, the reason it was, it was, it was, it was the policy just changed, historically, this never came before for the, the committee yeah. because it was done non-school time. The 148 yeah. students, many of other schools that combine in other show classes around here. So mm -hmm. that 148 is not all Shepherd Hill students. Mm -hmm. um, and what Mr. Dessler and I have talked about in the past was it wasn't school related. I mean, it wasn't uh, school during this in school time. So she was going on that assumption. So when the policy passed, I said, hey, you better put this in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, the, just, yeah. to, just to inform. I think it's interesting because I don't, I didn't clearly understand that because it's not indicated that those are not our students in, in the letter that she gave me. So. Well, it is in the letter that. Uh, yeah. It says in, in, this is not feasible on a plane to keep costs down for our students. The former director, Connie Galley, invited other schools and their students with us. Right, but but the letter she said she wrote does not indicate to the school committee that. I would, still, I would still say to you that if any students are attending who are members of this district, and by the nature of the fact that this is an overnight, out-of-state field trip, it must be approved. Yeah, I and, agree. Yeah, it so it must be approved. Happened, yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully and, and some of the changes will help. Absolutely, and yeah. my comment is not, I think this is wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. and I, I am all for it, but, but if we have a policy, we need to ensure our duty is to ensure the safety of our students. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So that's my only comment for that. When it's a summer camp, though. July? Yeah, I know, and it is a summer camp, so, and the parents are paying for this on their own. Why is it a school thing? If I want to send my son to a hockey camp, say. You're not sending your son as part of the Shepherd Hill. That's right. Camp. That's right. That's right. He's got our name attached. And, in, and in fact, I think there are some challenges when you have other students yeah, going on this yeah. trip who are being chaperoned and the trip is being um, approved by a school committee because you know, it presents uh, an interesting I, dynamic. I'm under the assumption yeah. that we are only approving this for our students, correct? Well, yeah. our students, are, I guess, are right. not the 148. We're, we're only sending part of that. So okay. you can only approve a trip for so your students. Your students. Mm -hmm. She's asking you to approve a trip that includes 148 people, of whom I, I'm assuming some are not um, Shepherd Hill students. Okay. Um, and, no, I'm ahead. sorry, I just have one more question. Where we have field trips that happen during the summer or during a vacation, and I can imagine that there will be people that are on vacation and not on vacation, do we have an emergency contact list to provide these people with when they leave? Like so that if, some, if an incident happens that they know, like protocol, who are they calling back here to tell them of something? Do you know what I'm saying? Like I know what you're saying. I can't answer that because okay. I don't. Yes. Yeah. I would assume. Been doing this for 30 years. From That's what I was going to I'm not saying just yeah. here. There, of course, there is a yeah. protocol that they, they go through. So from a, from a, yeah. That, you know, so is it written? Is it that? I mean, yeah. I, I certainly am yeah. informed yeah. yeah. as the principal. Yeah. Right. I've okay. been the last two summers. You know, okay. Uh, yeah. So there is there is a protocol. There are practices in place. Right. There is no district-wide practice. Okay. But common sense, if you have a principal, they would have that number. Whether you want them to have other numbers um, is, is part of really the discussion that needs to happen on a form that you create that is district-wide. We have some that have emergency forms that look like this. We have some that simply say you notify the nurse. We have some that say you must sign off. So there needs to be some consistency and clarity, in my opinion, for these kinds of travel, because we have a lot of travel in this district, mm. yeah, a lot of travel. 
on. So, can I just ask one question to the whole? Um, for I know that we're we're doing policies on this. Um, through the policies, is there anything that states that? I know during regular daytime trips, um, for um, field trips, chaperones need to have quarries. All of these chaperones for overnight trips as well will have quarries, correct? Mm -hmm. Is that in the policy that all chaperones should? Yes. Yeah. That is there. Okay. That will. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Now I have. Uh, I'm going to ask a question because I'm not familiar with the camp, but. Do they have to be represented by a school? Do they have to go under the Shepherd Hill Show Choir? Because if I was going to send yeah, my been for the past thirty years, what? I mean, they go they go representing Shepherd Hill, and a lot of people go. Uh, could the music association sponsor this and not be a part of the Shepherd Hill? Maybe I don't know. Because again, I feel follow. as a parent, if I have a student that's in the Show Choir. And I feel like sending my uh, son or daughter to a summer camp, and I'm paying for it. Then I'm responsible for my, and not the school. But I think it's because they go under the name of Shepherd Hill that we're responsible. Maybe if they took that out, they can go to summer camp, then we're not responsible. Mm -hmm. Because the parents are paying, they're sending their uh, children to a summer camp. That would take the approval off of the school mm -hmm. committee because we would not be liable, liable. for those students. Right. right. So you could check that. Go ahead. Um, the chair, since it is the music parents who are, I don't know if they're the ones who are chaperoning, but since they are the ones organizing and providing the bus and transportation, are they responsible for that period of time, the Sunday that they leave? like on the bus in the hotel but not responsible through the actual camp that the parents are paying for themselves it's just the time that um the music parents I are think sponsoring the parents them would be responsible for every everything okay. if they weren't going under the name of the shepherd hill okay. choir that would be like i'm sending my child to a camp i'm sending my them on mm -hmm. the bus to go they have chaperones i'm responsible okay do you have any idea how many of the 148 are actually Shepherd Hill kids? No, I can find out. Yeah. That'd be interesting. So, and again, it could, I mean, we could have a higher number. Yeah. I mean, they do stay at uh, a university in the dorm. Yeah. So it's a hotel yeah. for the travel. They stop overnight and go right. to the right. 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 They indicate, though, yeah, um, Bill, in the letter that she wrote in February, she indicates that they are students from the middle school, both middle schools and yeah. the high school. But I don't see where she indicates in this letter. It, it, it was in the original 529-2019. Um, that uh, students will be from surrounding districts. Where is that? It says that to reduce cost. 148 might be off in this district. I don't know. I'm just reading the part where uh, to reduce yeah. costs in years past, other schools. I, I, there are other students that go on this trip from uh, the it's Connecticut so school. Because uh, they're, they're, they're a close kind of uh, <laughs> terms of the, uh, the other show choirs in the area. I know uh, a couple years ago, there was all of our AIM students that came out, the parents got them here, got them on the bus, and then they went. Mm -hmm. Can we find out how many of them? Yeah, through the chair. Yeah. yeah, how many of these students of the 148 are ours, and how many are not? Can we find that out? Through the chair, just, and I agree, Mr. Chaplin, I, I want you to know, I think this is a great trip, but I think this is a little muddy. Um, to, and maybe Dr. Nash can better answer this question. I'm just confused. Um, if there are, say, 50 students that aren't Dudley Dead, Dead Charlton students, are we legally responsible for those students? Anytime you approve a trip, you have some culpability that could happen. You approve a senior class trip to Disney World. Yep. You could have some culpability if someone got injured. I mean, you know, if you approve. Any trip, an international yeah. travel. Uh, the only concern I have is is uh, that some of these students are not uh, Dudley Charlton students. I do not know, you know, how how or in what way that would impact uh, us if it does, even legally. I don't know. No, and th and that's I, <coughs> I guess my concern is, to me, whether they're our students or not. Either way, we're liable, in my opinion. 
I, and I, I if you know. the, the, the yeah. organizers of the trip in terms of the people going are responsible for everybody mm -hmm. and because there are other teachers when it happened in years past other teachers and, and show choir directors went with their students yeah, it wasn't just like that. we took 10 all our age students with us and adopted them no no I understand the, the teachers and, and, and show choir people went with them let me text you and see, see but let me let me um, in, ask this question typically when we have a trip that's approved and a student who is a Shepherd Hill student breaks a rule, um, there's discipline involved. Okay. Um, so, drinking or anything else, there's a consequence for that that could include, you know, being, having not able to play your sport in the fall for the first so many games, suspension from school, so my, you know, that obviously has an impact. Secondly, uh, you know, the people attending are parents as opposed to uh, being uh, teachers or anybody else. So obviously the, the person responsible um, for overseeing them it has to be the person who is the teacher and to ensure that um, students do not do something that they should not be doing because a field trip is an extension of the school day or whatever. You know, what happens on a field trip has a consequence. If a child uh, is on an international travel trip and breaks the school rule, there's a consequence because you've approved that trip. So the same thing would hold true here. My question is, how do you then impact the consequence for a student who is not a student in your school district? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I think ahead. that this has gotten way overcomplicated is my opinion on this. And I, I, everybody else might have a different opinion than I do, but this is something that has occurred for many years and there's been no no paperwork, no approval, no follow through, no. I think we approved these in the past. That's what he said. Yeah, we, we, well, we knew they were going anyways. We were, we were told. informed. We were informed. There was no approval. So, so, my, so my point is, we are worlds about, I come from like regulation, that's my world, and I still <laughs> think this is overkill, man. I think that, the, but, but one thing happens, and so I look at it as, the way I hear it anyways, we're sharing resources to get somewhere, and so, what to Dr. Nash's point, if something if somebody does something in a different school district, then that's on their department and their school district to enforce their regulations and their rules and their punishments. I just don't think that has anything to do with us. We would enforce it for our children and they would enforce it for their children. And I feel like if I want to be technical, we've already voted on this twice tonight. We did. <laughs> Yeah, we already voted, and then you asked another question, right? I mean, it and and that happened twice in this. Can we take a vote? No. Our, I think, the hands I think all our hands were up. I think the question. But then you asked. Well, uh, someone asked the question. I didn't take the count or anything. Okay. I just but feel like this has been a long I, time. I think to solve the problem, because it's in the summer, I don't think we should have to approve this. Take out Shepherd Hill choir under that name that they're going because it's a mixed group. That's all. But isn't that and and throw it back to the parents. They're sending their child to a summer camp. Yeah, but the chaperones are all staff. From it staff doesn't away. matter. I think you're playing with words here. And then say something does happen, they're not going to think, oh, Shepherd Hill's not in it, so we're, we're not, we're not going to. Um, I've sent my kids to hockey camps where there was combined. I've sent them to basketball camps. They were never approved by a school committee. I paid, they went. And it was the difference different is you school. Didn't have, you didn't have a coach from Shepherd Hill right. or a teacher or a music department head in charge leading it. You just sent them. You paid, and they went to Kenny Hodge Senior's camp or something like that. But aren't we you saying that, that they bring their, those other schools bring their own people? And so we're all just sharing the resource of a bus. I don't know if the chaperones are from the other, you know, other schools. I'm assuming they're from here. Yeah, but I'm the most of them. Some of them are. Um, it's Becky, her husband, Miss yeah, right. um, Rassicott, who's chaperoning Miss Galley, and then Name some Jared parents. Um, the Shepherd Hill staff. With these. Well, some of them are. I don't think some are, but McGuire. These kids are going to want to go because oh, they've gone I'm not for all even these years. So. About the trip. I think it's yeah. a great the chair, trip. I think we just need to have some clarity and just make sure that the, if we have other students coming from other towns, they have their own chaperones to deal with them 
and we're fine and how what is our actual number and I, and I don't think it's a problem at all I'm with Mrs. Caminati I agree I'm not I think this is great I'm not I just want to know the policy and I want to know how we have a duty to protect Dudley Charlton Regional School District and mm -hmm. this trip is is a trip that's going um, spearheaded by sh the Shepherd Hill staff so so yes we're we're make they're joining forces with other communities and I think that's a great thing I'm not dissuading that but we I just need to know what the policy is for these type of trips when it's in the summer school's not in session what's the procedure so we legally can make sure we're following the correct protocols that's my opinion but, well this but is the first time, time this is this is the first time that we've been um, looking at something we were sharing with other schools so from from the liability perspective it, the the issue is it says Shepherd Hill show choir department it's being run by our Shepherd Hill show choir director most of the people are from Shepherd Hill most of the of the chaperones are from Shepherd Hill or some association with that that means it has to come before the school committee and we're liable for the, that group even though it's during the summer because of those factors the other schools I don't know I've never encountered that before I don't think that we're liable for those for those kids because they should be bringing their own people as as mr. Chaplin said we have ten the student councils share with Bartlett don't they when they go to the Cape don't they don't they go with other yeah. student councils so we've done it with other schools before but it's during school year well you share a bus so we've done it with other schools you're sharing the, the bus for when they get there they have their own chaperones yeah yeah so well I just my fear with waiting and not approving it I hear that everybody wants clarity we got a motion on the table anyway but is that this is a July 6th mm -hmm. date, mm -hmm. and I don't think it seems appropriate to wait till the end of June to get them an answer so that they can move forward on this. Can, could we possibly just vote and amend the motion so that we we are allowing, you know, Superintendent Nash to make the final call? Like, to no, just we're get approving. We've got a motion I would say to approve it, but we'll tell them we want to know these facts. facts. Once we get the facts, right. are we going to change our vote even if we, when we find the facts? Would that change your opinion, yes or no? No. No, I so why don't we just. No, no I but I, make sure so I would say facts. vote tonight and, they've done it for and then just give years. us the facts to let me know yeah. what happened, who's going and stuff like that. But I think the vote won't change, will it? What are the facts, no more facts that you want? I would like to know how many are Shepherd Hill kids. Kids. Right. Yeah. That's my main concern. Is it like 140 in Beto? Is it 50? 50? Yeah. You know, just a point of clarity. Do you mean Dudley Charlton kids versus Shepherd Hill? Yeah, because Hill the kids? Dudley Middle School is big. They're all right. Dudley Charlton yeah. kids. Yeah. I mean, non Dudley Charlton yeah. students. Yeah. How many are not actually our students? And it I could be like five yeah. kids. And I know. feel that they're sharing the bus, but when they get there, they're going to have their own chaperones from the different schools. Yeah. So yeah. they'll be uh, answering yeah. to their yeah. school right. chaperone. But if that's another thing that we can put down sure. other chaperones yeah. going with those students right. from other right. districts and I think okay. that's it okay it, and I would maybe comment this is a learning period for I think all, us and and the applicants that next year this will all be their ducks will get in a row and we won't have to have this right. conversation again that would be my understanding for next year okay so then uh, I will take a vote on approving the trip all in favor Okay, motion carries, it's unanimous. And then we have um, consideration of requests for first time use of uh, our facility. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yes, uh, the uh, Worcester County United Field Hockey uh, organization has uh, requested uh, use of the high school field beginning June 19th through August 8th uh, on Wednesday and Thursday nights from 5.30 to 7.30. They've included their limit of liability policy. I think you have a copy of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're recommending. And you're recommending it. Yes. Okay. I'll um, entertain a motion to approve. Do I have a motion to approve the use of our facility? Motion. Okay. Do I have a second? 
I'll make a second. Okay. Discussion. I have. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Stephanie. Uh, so I noticed that this is a nonprofit. Um, it, it is not a nonprofit organization, and they're charging an admission to have this group come together every um, Wednesday and Thursday. Are we going to be including a rental fee in that for our own use and up t upkeep of our own fields? I do not know. <laughs> this is all I have. We so if we have that enough, we if should we use that. Yeah, so what does it if, say? If they're, if they're, not, if they're a for-profit group um, or if they charge admission, then generally uh, fees are charged. If, uh, per, per our policy, current, yeah. right. they right. should be charged. Right. But I don't see right. any charges here. Um, right. Custodial charges, right. no, nothing. I don't see anything. So it's really hard to approve something when we don't have the information. I think the proposed to approve it based upon the appropriate fees being collected. Well, one of the things that we discussed at policy is is um, the payment or at least a deposit needs to be made up front. Okay. At the time, at the time that at generally time, when, yeah. I think what happens with uh, contracts, yeah, rental fee right. contracts, is that there yeah, is a deposit that's made until that's received. That you know, until you receive that, the um, space is not reserved. Um, the other thing is this form; it doesn't make it easy because you you don't really have clear cut indication of where the fee cost. G generally, right. forms have. Cost. They have a section, yeah, okay. so that's one of the things we're trying to redo um, for this um, amid all the other forms. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a, it's a just not the easiest form to read. Nor do you see much with cost. And then there's approval that says either the cost has been waived and a sign off by whoever has waived that fee. Usually, that's someone in central office. So that should be the yeah. superintendent. Yeah, or his or her designee. Oftentimes, it's the director of business or finance who oversees operations and does that. And yeah. not the athletic yeah. director. Or the principal. athletic director just simply says it's available, the space, mm -hmm. right? Then when it comes up here, you look to see if they're a for-profit or not. You know, if you if they, and then you have a fee category structure, a level one, a level two, whatever the numbers are, and you have to look at that to make sure that they fit into one of those and make a determination. In some cases where someone requests, you know, some kind of a special dispensation about that, someone makes a decision oftentimes. Uh, but um, it, it's just, it's not clear in this form that you have where fees are. Uh, I've, you know, so other than. There is a standard fee that we would normally charge for this? There is, because you do have a form that goes with this. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. this is only two pages yeah. of right. a six-page form. Yeah. Um, so okay. yes, yeah. it's all spelled out in yeah. the document. So do we so. know if they know of the fee and have they paid the deposit? Well, currently they're not required to do that. Okay. Moving forward, there might be a consideration that you should do that. Do they know they, the fee? Do they know there's a fee? Yeah. I don't know, because okay. I don't know totally how the process, and I, I hate to sound like, no, the, I, generally I the either. process <laughs> works in that when the when these uh, forms are all filled out, there's a complete packet that has all that information. As Richard said, it's multiple pages. Um, in that process, it outlines what you have to do. You bring it in, someone checks it, make sure, and then you give the deposit at that time, or you come back and give the deposit because the person is not there to be able to tell you those fees are accurate or not. It has to be reviewed by someone. But uh, I, I don't know currently, you know, how that process works uh, here. Is there the chair? Go ahead. Um, I think it's just, I think this is an easy one that we say, mm -hmm. this is how much it costs, the committee approved it, upon receival of the deposit of X amount of money. If it isn't re received, then we don't approve it. And we, we make mm -hmm. it a contingent approval. Yep. And it was my motion, so I'm happy yep. to alter that. Right. If you're happy, Stephanie, to Is there a separate form that has the fee, that has the actual okay. rental contract form where the fee is listed? Yeah, the, the rental contract itself, I think, is six pages. 
Yeah, so, so my question we, is, it says yeah. you should have been given four weeks in no. advance, and this was turned May 22nd. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. starting next week, the 19th. How come we're getting it so no, late? No, that's... No, no that doesn't Excuse make me. sense. It's supposed to be four weeks in advance. They filled it out May 22nd. Today's June 11th, and the thing supposedly is starting on the 19th. Well, that, that's crazy. It's roughly... It's roughly May 22nd. May 22nd. May 22nd but we didn't get it till today, and we're supposed to... Request must well, be submitted. Not, I don't know what yeah. happened to it for three weeks. Oh. You know? The last school committee meeting was May 22nd, I believe. But not, did Everybody? anybody ever contact these before it came to us saying, telling them of, of the fees and so on? I can't explain the process. <laughs> and, you know, like yeah. we usually do. We don't know. I, I, would, I would guess that if Cheryl was um, in that day and had received this form and she had seen that it was no nonprofit was checked off as no and that uh, an admission fee was going to be charged knowing our policy she would have informed the group at that time that there was uh, the likelihood of a fee even though it's de it's designated for our local students I can't say whether or not that actually happened because I don't know you know if Cheryl was in that particular day and, and all of that but but what we still don't have on this is the actual cost someone has to write in the cost to give that to that person not the list of the fees structure right. that's part of your policy um, or part of the forms but there's nothing in here that tells you this is the cost of the custodian if you need one this is the cost the mm -hmm. hourly cost of the field that's what's missing and that shouldn't be Cheryl's job to determine that's that right, right. So absolutely that's all I would say so there's a point. flaw in the process for sure we yes can yes see that, but to mm -hmm. move forward right now right so you can't blo yeah right at this point I I don't know what they're being charged because I don't see it on here well right unless we're missing a page in the form this is what we got that's all I can tell you that, yeah can't we go to mrs. Terry's suggestion was to approve it and then have the you know approve it based on the, whatever the fees are Contingent upon, upon Con yeah. getting the deposit up front. With is that, a, I, that's my opinion, because I don't know. They don't really, uh, they, they weren't notified about fees that they been know. Held on in. I don't know. Well, isn't it their choice if we tell them these are the yeah. fees and they don't they want to, they can back they out. Yes, yeah. that's right. right. They're not stuck with it. Correct. You know, we okay. tell them, yeah, Did, my opinion. Uh, read the second okay, you'll take it back and you can. Well, uh, I just read the no. whole thing. I'll withdraw with, my second. Yeah, yeah and thanks. withdraw and then we'll make another sure. motion. Uh, do another motion. Okay, so everything's withdrawn. Jamie, you wanted to. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consideration for this request for first time use of the facility for this camp um, contingent upon receiving the deposit as is per our policy. Per our policy. Prior to. Any payments per our policy. Or any fees, any payments or fees. I'll second that. Okay. Any more discussion on it? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Motion carries, it's unanimous. Okay, our next school meeting, Wednesday, June 26th. It'll be at the Charlton uh, middle school and it will start at 7 p.m. Budget and finance to be announced. Policy review subcommittee is Wednesday, June 12th, Shepherd Hill Regional High School. It'll be in the conference um, at room mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. Future agenda items. Are we going to do student handbooks? No. No, that okay. will be September. Mm -hmm. That's September. Mm -hmm. um, and that, okay, any other agenda items? That if we need to open up a grade for school choice. Okay. And okay. I just had a question for the meet or the June 26th meeting. Am I on the agenda for that, just for planning purposes? Um. You want to be? <laughs> Whatever you guys need me to do. I don't know if, if I'll have anything to record come, for you guys. Right. If, <laughs> but come, come and if you have something okay. to... We'll leave it up to you, okay? okay? You make the decision. Thank you. I just want okay. to talk. We'll go to the beach. <laughs> we'll go to the beach. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Coyne, can we set the July and August dates? Have we talked about those? Oh, we, that's good. Because we haven't discussed uh, Thank those. you. Yeah. Uh, we meet once in July and once in August. So um, do we want to collectively choose a date that we could all? I think Mr. LaMarche is not available. Mr. Dr. Nash, do you know what days he's Well, Sandy to? knew something to that effect. She was telling me. I'm not sure. Remember, you had said a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Before the next 
Or do you want to wait till he comes? Do we have anything to discuss? No. I think it should make okay. it. Okay. We'll probably go to the end of July. The uh, superintendent's conference is the 9th, 10th, 11th. And Bill, when is the principals? When's that? 18th, 19th, and 20th. Okay. So those are the two. So that's second week in July and third week in July? Well, the 18th to Thursday. Yeah. So that I'm thinking that, that probably based on that, that will give them some time in, you know. So when's he actually starting first coming? Into July 1st. He's coming. I bet he'll, he'll be on the campus on July 1st. Uh, yeah, I off. believe so, yes. And then he'll be on his meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, now you probably don't want one that week. No, no, I just wanted to see if he was yeah, busy yeah, back yeah. I know he's got those No, uh, the, that's the following week, okay. Yeah, the following right, week so is the so superintendent. Is that what we're doing July 24th? Is it closed down that week? No, closed down, no, the okay. partial is like 8, 9, 10, something like that. How about, uh, is July 24th on a Wednesday? Yes. Mm -hmm. How about July 24th? I vote that for that. Sound good? Come on down. Come on down. I'll be recuperating. Do we say in, in our policy it has to be the second week in July? Or do we just say July? But, um, we'd have to waive the policy. That's all. That's it. Yeah, we'll waive the I'll policy waive because case. I think we, we do that in the summertime. We need a two-thirds two vote to waive the policy. <laughs> 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 Which, it, according to our policies. <laughs> say that again. Policy sounds to be two according two -thirds, to our policies. Yeah, we'll let's waive that. Waive that policy. You'll waive the policy <laughs> <laughs> if you I want it July 24th. Everybody will waive it. I'm going to waive that we change July and August dates to meet our schedules. Okay. Uh, do, she made a motion to have a second. Yeah, yeah, second. Okay, any discussion on it? Seeing that all in favor? Motion carries it. That's good, thank you. Where will, the, where will that meeting be? Uh, well, one will have at Shepherd Hill, one will have in Charlton. Yeah. So will the July 24th one be at Shepherd Hill? I'm going to leave it up to you. Yeah, because oh, yeah. Charlton was the previous one. So mm -hmm. Okay. Because we'll child. Yeah, I know you don't want to cross the board. And then August 21st. I'll have to eventually. <laughs> and then August will be in uh, What's the date of August? Do you want to go the week before school starts? What's better in case we need a vote of something? Like in 8, 821 would be the ideal date. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just before school. Mm -hmm. It's not too long mm -hmm. before the next meeting right. in September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can everybody go along with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we have our dates. And that's, that's child meeting at 7 o'clock. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. Um, and Sandy, you can send us a note on that, so we'll have it in writing. Okay. I had an off-topic question, off of that topic question. Do we have the new total for the lunch debt? I was, I was well, trying to keep track oh yeah, of where we are. I heard are. we have good notes well, on that. Really? Right, yeah. Miss? Yeah, I heard from Mr. Chaplet about our, our cafeteria, the lunch debt she wanted. I said, I hear we have good news, hopefully. Say zero. All the seniors paid off their debt. The juniors, if they want to get a parking spot, need to have the financial ah, aid. Say, it's yeah. naturally going mm -hmm. to correct itself. Yeah, it's um, good. So good. Thank you so much. And then I zeroed out the rest. Oh, nice of you. Administrative <laughs> 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 decision. Yeah. So, so we really don't know if the answer is at the <laughs> overall. <laughs> overall, you mean not just high school? I, I, yeah. I mean, we were at a very high number, and I was yeah. Question, actually. Oh, oh, great. Yeah, um, Mr. Greenberg expects the deficit balances because we have had a good influx of, of uh, monies from seniors graduating from Mr. Chaplin's uh, policy, et cetera, uh, to be around the same level, close out the year about the same level as last year, which was about twenty thousand dollars. Very good. So, we made Still progress. Is that $20, yeah. yeah. That does not seem like a zero to me. That's not so bad. It's not just the high school. No, no, it's not just the high school. It's district wide. No, it's district wide. Still high. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Were we successful with the people that we said we were going to take the court and how that all brought that process all in? Uh, we have. We certainly haven't taken anybody to court yet. Could be. Uh, but again, we you know we did basically take the deficit and reduce it by thirty three percent. So that's progress. Is it where we want to be? No. Uh, we're still uh, discussing um, collection uh, firms and those sorts That's of things. I mean. We haven't, we haven't seen we don't, anybody don't have yet with yeah. the collection because, firms. So. Because what happens if we get to July 1st? Are we still able to pursue those? Yes. Okay. The, de the debt does not go away. I, the, there's, I understand there's, that. There's simply the requirement that the general fund provide those deficits to the cafeteria fund. Mm -hmm. That still is an incredibly large amount of money in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable with that. 
well, we paid it out of our general fund, so some of it is going to have to be bad debt <laughs> in we the end, just debt. like a, a no business. So right. kids have to eat. <laughs> anyway, uh, right now we're going to go into executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation of negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel and to reconvene into regular session only to take votes and then we'll adjourn. I will take a roll call now. Yes. 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 We're in executive session.